Chu Ting wakes up in a bedroom in the arms of a lady and he is shocked by how he got into such a situation. The lady was attempting to sleep with him, but the drug she gave him quickly wore off. Chu Ting begins to wonder if he got reborn, because as far as he can remember, 300 years ago, he accidentally entered the fairy world, after which he began his cultivation journey. He worked so hard during those years to become a swordsman cultivator, but when he was about to reach the realm of eternity, he unexpectedly opened a hall of time and space and returned to Earth when he was 17. He quickly leaves the room and goes outside. On getting outside, he feels glad that he will be seeing his family again after a very long time. However, he notices something strange as he looks around the city. He sees that women are in charge of every activity and are with roles and responsibilities that men take in a normal world. He heads to the library to find out why things turned out this way. He discovers that in ancient times, an event occurred that altered women's physiology, making them stronger and smarter. In this world, women are superior to men, and in fact, they chase men as opposed to men chasing women. He finds this very absurd and hopes that it's not the same with his family too. He heads home and sees his father taking care of the home. Lin Yan to his father, is surprised to see him since he said he was going to visit his friend and would be returning late. His father perceives the scent of a woman's perfume on his body and starts to rebuke him, telling him about a young boy that was recently raped. His mom is out on a business meeting, so he leaves his father and goes to check on his sister, Chu Xiao, in her room. He finds her watching porn and he feels irritated. After a while, she dresses up for a hangout with her friends and tells Lin Yantu that she would be coming back late. Her father doesn't hold her back since girls have to go out and make money for themselves and can't be tied down like men. Chu Chanan returns home from work and Chu Ting becomes excited to see his mom again. He observes how his father is acting towards his mom and finds it very awkward and disgusting that his mom is the breadwinner of the family while his father is just with the responsibilities of a wife. He wonders if this is how he would end up too. He can bear the sight, so he leaves his parents and goes to his room. In his room, he opens his drawer and sees several letters. Then he realizes that he is the school flower of his secondary school. All the girls want him. He finds this irritating and becomes determined to cultivate as soon as possible, so he can leave this strange upside-down world and return to his original world. He starts his cultivation practice, and after a while, his senses become sharpened. Suddenly, his sister calls him and tells him that she is in trouble. Some ladies are holding her hostage at a bar, and they tell him to bring the black bag under his sister's bed immediately if he doesn't want her hurt. He picks up the bag and heads there immediately. He is not going to let anyone mess with his family. On getting there, he gives them the bag which, unknowingly to his sister, contained a huge sum of money. His sister is released and as they turn to take their leave, the head of the assailants, Ju, stops them. She admires Chu Ting and tells him to stay back while his sister leaves. His sister tries to defend him, but he steps in and slaps Zhao when she begins to talk naughty. She tries to hit him, but he resists her. She then orders her ladies to attack him, but he beats them all in a snap. He and his sisters start to leave however, Zhou brings out a gun and threatens to shoot him. And while Chu Xiao begs, a lady walks in. She has been enjoying the scene. Chu King recognizes her. It's the lady from the beginning when he got reborn, Chengxi. She tells him that she runs the bar. She then tells Zhou to leave while she handles the rest. But while Zhou tries to protest, she orders that they take her away and cut her feet and hands. Chengxi admires him too and wants to make him her boyfriend, but he tells her that that he isn't interested. She starts to compare how weak men are to women, and this causes Chu Ting to suggest they play a game together to test who is stronger. The deal is that if he wins, she won't disturb him anymore, but if she wins, he will become her boyfriend. They soon begin the game. While women in this world are extraordinary and see men as insignificant, Chu Ting seeks to prove that he isn't an ordinary human. He unleashes his strength and wins her. Feeling intimidated, she offers that if he becomes her husband, no other woman in the city will be able to lay their hands on him. Women are the pillars of the world, and as a man, he will end up taking care of a woman's wings anyway. However, he turns down the offer in strong support of men and leaves with his sister. Chen Qi finds him amusing seeing that he is very different from all other men, and she continues to have an interest in him. As soon as Chu Ting returns home with his sister, he continues his cultivation practice, so can quickly reach his true strength. The next day at school, he sees his best friend Lin Dong. However, when he notices that he is acting feminine, he gets irritated and makes an excuse to go away from him. In the class, he sits by his desk, frustrated about still being in this absurd world. Sancho Oran, the class president, comes over to him to ask about his well-being but another girl gets jealous and bullies her off. However, Chu Ting pushes her away and it almost leads to a fight before Yi Mao. Chen Xi's brother appears and stops them. Yi Mao takes Chu Ting outside and apologizes for what his sister did to him the previous day. Chen Xi had drugged Chu Ting while she gave him a lift in her car 
car and took him to her bedroom. After school, as Chu King walks home, Cheng Xi stops her car and tells him to get in for the sake of his family. He gets in the car and she drives off. After a while, he warns her about messing with his family, however, she tells him that she wasn't threatening him but only wants to help with his parents' business. She later asks him if he practices old martial arts, but he lies to her telling her that it is already known that men cannot cultivate so there's no way he would be able to practice martial arts. Suddenly, they are hit by an oncoming vehicle which causes their car to tumble. Chu Ting gets injured but still manages to save Chengxi. Some bunch of females appear with clubs in their hands and start coming towards them. Chengxi gets offended and starts to fight against them for hurting Chu Ting. Chu Ting, feeling underestimated again, joins in the fight to prove that he isn't as weak. After beating all of them, Chu Ting attempts to start going home before his dad becomes worried, but Chengxi receives a call in which she is told that her mom was also assaulted and got hurt. She becomes teary and begs Chu Ting to stay with her. Chu Ting considers the situation and concludes that the attacks on both her and her mom didn't occur by coincidence. Chengxi fears that her mom would die and her aunt would kick her out of the Yi family. Chu Ting tries to calm her and then follows her home. On getting home, Chu Ting is stopped at the gate from entering on the order of Chengxi's aunt that no one except Chengxi should be allowed in. Chu Ting identifies himself as a doctor who has come to check on Chengxi's mom. They dive in wondering how a man got to be a doctor and still do not allow him to enter. Luckily, Chu King studied medicine while he was in the fairy world. He starts to diagnose the health problems of the security agents just by looking at them and they become shocked. They then allow him in but when he and Chengxi make their way in, Chengxi's aunt, Yi Mike, crosses them and tells Chu Tsing that he has to prove himself before he can enter the Yi family. She calls on her daughter, Yi Meyer, to test him if he is skilled or not. Yi Mai does this so she can have an accusation against Chengxi. She wants to tempt Chengxi to help Chu Tsing while Yi Meyer harms him, which is against the rules of the Yi family. Meyer asks that Chu Ting would make love to her throughout the night if she wins him in a fight. Chengxi tries to protest, however, Chu Ting agrees to it and tells them to get started with the fight. Meyer makes the first move to attack him, but he dodges it and knocks her out in one hit. Yi Mai is shocked and starts to rant. He and Chengxi then head into the house to meet Chengxi's mom. On getting to her room, Chengxi's mom, doubting he can help her, tells him to excuse them. He quickly diagnoses her situation in one glance which gets her attention and makes her demand that the others leave the room while she talks with him alone. She suspects that he was sent by the Lai family and asks what his intention is for Chengxi. However, he tells her that he is not from the Lai family and is just a friend of Chengxi. She believes him and shows him her wound. Chu Ting is shocked by how worse the wound has become. Though she can resist it now, it would lead to damage to her internal organs in five days. He then places his hand over the wound and starts to absorb it. However, he can't absorb it all at his current level. Chengxi's mother becomes relieved and appreciates him for helping. On his way home, he looks at the wound he absorbed in his palm, however, can't eradicate it at his current level. He knows an elixir from the fairy world that is used for handling stuff like this, but wonders if it will be available in this world too. The next day, he arrives at school and sees Tang Zion playing basketball, with all the boys admiring her. Tang Zion used to be his first love and preparatory in his original world, but she doesn't know him in this world. She suddenly walks up to him asking him to play basketball with her. He agrees and snatches the ball from her. She tells him to compete with her, and if she wins, he will become her boyfriend. But if she loses to him, she will do whatever he wants. The game starts. She collects the ball and quickly scores her first point. Chu Ting is shocked. She gets the ball in her possession again and tries to score another point, but he blocks it and collects the ball. He tells her it's his turn and goes on to score a point by jumping from an unbelievable distance. He wins and asks her out on a date, but she replies that he needs to become stronger if he wants a date with her. Later, at Yi family's mansion, Chengxi asks him how she can reward him for saving her and her mom. Chu King thinks of some silly thoughts and smiles and tells her to give him some time to think. However, he made some progress in his pure aura and spiritual body when he helped Chengxi's mom with her wounds. He becomes determined to completely heal Chengxi's mom next time so he can fully awaken his spiritual body. As he walks home, Lai Yui crosses him and threatens him to stay away from Tang Zivian. However, Chu Ting ignores him. This gets Lai Yui annoyed and he tries to lay hands on him, but Chu King dodges it and beats him and his female bodyguards. Chu Ting wonders why Tang Zion plans to marry such a stupid guy and thinks of a way to investigate the matter. He remembers Chengxi's reward offer and decides to ask her for a private investigator. Chu Ting waits at the bar for the private investigator. A young lady named Chen Huahua approaches him and introduces herself as the investigator. Chu Ting can't believe his eyes. He thinks she's underage. Chen Huahua asks about his relationship with Chengxi and begins to flirt with him, telling him to be her boyfriend. Chu King gets embarrassed and goes straight to the reason he came. He asks her about Tang Zian's family. She tells him that Tang's family is one of the huge families in the city and they own most of the city's large business corporations. But recently, they've had some problems which caused their financial status to become unstable. 
The Lai family proposed a marriage between Lai Yuwei and Tang Zidian if the Tang family wants them to assist in solving their problems. Chu Ting is surprised as Tang Zian never mentioned these to him in his past life. He then asks Chen Huahua about alchemy, wondering if alchemic families also exist in this world. To his surprise, Chen Huahua tells him that the Tang family is one of the alchemic families and they specialize in elixirs and medicines. He then asks her for more information. She tells him about the two known alchemy types, the common alchemy which works by using extraordinary internal power to prepare elixirs, and the other which uses spiritual power. She tells him the second alchemy type is completely out of her scope, and he wonders if there are people like him also in this world. He tries to ask her for more information, but she tells him she would only answer if he goes with her for dinner. Chu Ting follows her to a small eatery. He becomes shocked when she orders pork skewers and beers, and also finds out that other women are ordering the same. He soon remembers that this world is the reverse of the original after all. Chen Huahua soon gets drunk, and he carries her home. He places her on her bed, and as he tries to take his leave, she grabs him and tells him to stay with her. After she has slept, Chu Ting takes her phone and starts to search for more information. He opens a confidential transaction document and sees an auction house where rare items are auctioned. He thinks of something that could be worth a lot in this world, which he can auction to make a lot of money. Some days later, he practices cultivation and obtains a spiritual rock. Spiritual rocks are known to make cultivation rhythm faster and aid in practicing old martial arts. They can be obtained through the veins or cultivating eternity. There are no spiritual rocks in this world, so he plans to auction this one. At Chengxi's family residence, he completely heals Chengxi's mother, and she promises to return the favor whenever he has any problem. As he goes home, he reasons that he needs to cultivate as much as he can to revive his spiritual body. Suddenly, Chengxi stops him and kisses him, as a little present for healing her mom and promises to give him the complete present someday. Chu King gets home and continues his cultivation process until he finally revives his spiritual body. He summoned a sword in the process. His sister suddenly badges into his room. Being naked, he quickly covers himself and hides the sword. His sister apologizes and leaves immediately, thinking he was masturbating. Chu King dresses up and goes to the auction house to sell the spiritual rock. When Jai Yu, the successor of the auction house, sees the spiritual rock, he offers to pay a huge amount immediately. As Chu Ting returns home, he reasons that if he can create a huge monopoly of businesses from this, it'd just be a matter of time before he rules the auction and the martial arts world. He receives a message from Huahua asking to have a drink together, and as he heads there, someone suddenly attacks him. He summons his sword and makes multiple slashes on the stranger very quickly. The stranger pleads for his life and confesses that Lai Yue sent him, however, Chu King kills him and becomes determined to annihilate the Lai family. He continues walking and suddenly, he feels a thumping in his heart. He begins to notice that his body is getting hot and his vision is blurring out. He manages to head to Huawa's house and soon wonders why he came there. He suddenly becomes aroused and on seeing Huawa, he kisses her. He is surprised at why he is feeling this way and apologizes to her. Wawa, however, tells him to continue and they both soon make love to each other that night. The next day, Tang Zion comes looking for him in class. She tells him to have lunch with her and soon, she perceives a woman's scent on him. She ignores it and tells him to come along anyway. Others begin to wonder why a campus queen would invite Tang Zion for lunch. On their way, Tang Zion asks to hold hands with him and he agrees. She begins to blush. Tang Zion was raised to be an heiress and has always had to carefully plan who she socializes with. However, since she met Xu Ting at the court, she's had a strange feeling that he is someone important to her. She is loving him already and feels secure and comfortable anytime they are together. This feels strange to her, and she doesn't know why she feels this way. At the cafeteria, Chu Ting orders exactly what she loves, and she wonders how he knows. As they talk together, he notices two strange ladies walking in. He leaves the table and goes to eat the food, Suddenly, the two ladies bring out their daggers and attempt to attack Tang Zilian. However, Chu Ting throws a hot plate of food at one of them. He gets stabbed by the other, but he throws her off with his power. He then gets into physical combat with them and beats them both. Tang Zian is surprised. She asks him if he belongs to an ancient martial arts family, but he says no. He says they should get out of the cafeteria immediately as it isn't safe there anymore. Either way going, he starts feeling weak due to the injury from the stab. 
Tang Zilin offers to send him to the hospital, but he says the wound is not a major one and would heal up by itself. Chu Ching is surprised that he could be hurt by the two mediocre assassins and reasons that he needs to start making spirit artifacts for defense. Tang Zilin tells him that her family is known for producing medicines, but the family recipe got stolen a month earlier, and a few other medicinal families joined forces to pressure them. She thinks it has to do with the Lai family. He tells Tang Zian that he could fix her family problems and says they just need to make another formula for medicines, but she tells him that it's not easy to make formulas. He tells her that after the auction in two days, her family will notice him, and they can then go into details from there. He suddenly feels a thumping in his heart again. He perceives that the spirit energy he marked Chengxi with has been removed. He leaves Tang Zian and quickly calls Huawa to track Chengxi's location. He then calls Jia Yu to help him with a ride. Jia Yu soon arrives and they start following the target Huawa sent to him. Jia Yu chases as hard as possible and they soon see a van carrying Chengxi. Jia Yu forces the van to stop by hitting it with his car. Chu King comes out and beats all the agents in the van at once. As he tries to open the trunk of the van, a sudden blast hits the van and pushes him away from it. It is shocked at this level of power and wonders if this world has its spirit cultivators. Two men from the Quan Zen sect appear and compliment his skill. They ask him to join their sect, but Chu Ting turns down the offer, calling them failures. He insults them more, and they get very angry. One of them brings out his weapon, a salamander rod, and attacks Chu Ting, but Chu Ting counterattacks with his sword and breaks his weapon. He gets even angrier and attacks with a fiery punch, however, Chu Ting cuts off his hand. On seeing this, the other guy gets angry, but before he could take any action to defend his subordinate, Chu Ting kills him. He then tries to use his powers to attack Chu Ting, but Chu Ting stabs him before he knows it. Chu Ting then goes to the van to wait Chengxi. She sees him and tells him they have to leave immediately before the two senior Taoists arrive, but he calms her and tells her everything is fine. He asks her if she has an idea of who kidnapped her, and she says she suspects it's the Lai family. She also tells him that other small families have been creating problems for her family too, and Chu Ting reasons that it must be because of the upcoming auction event. There's a high chance for rare treasures to appear, and they want to disrupt other families from getting the news. Chengxi invites Chu Ting to her house so her mom can thank him for saving her, and he agrees to go with her. On getting to Chengxi's residence, they meet the Yi family having a secret meeting. Chengxi's mom tells him to have a seat, but one of the family members protests against it. He tells them he is not there for the secret meeting and brings out a spiritual stone. He says he came to talk about business instead. He gives them the spirit stone and tells them to check it. Not knowing its value, they think it's a random stone but Chu King tells Chengxi's mom to exercise her internal strength and feel its flow. She does this and immediately feels a surge of energy. She is surprised and asks how much he would sell it. However, he tells her it's not for sale yet as the price would be set at the upcoming auction. He then tells them he wants to give them a talisman. He made that provides protection and another that boosts combat strength for a short period. They are shocked and ask him for the reason he is helping them. And he says it's because Chengxi is his friend. Chu King's real plan is to set up his business empire in the city with the help of the Yi family. He gets back home and meets his second aunt, named Chu King, who tells him she came to talk about his arranged marriage. He tells her that he is still in college and marriage can wait until after his graduation but his aunt debunks his words. She goes on to trash talk everyone in his family. This gets him pissed, and he hits the table in annoyance. His aunt stands up to leave but still reminds him about getting married off soon. He insults her and heads to his room. On getting to his room, he calls Chengxi and asks for a favor. After a while, while Chu Ting, Chu Ting's aunt enjoys and spends time with some men at the bar. Chengxi orders her agent to get her leg and rip out a kidney too. Meanwhile that night, Chu Ting spends the whole night making protective artifacts for his friends and family that help him immediately know when the wearer is in danger. The next morning, he gives his father and sister the protective pendants he made for them. At school, he sleeps off in the classroom, having stayed up all night to make artifacts. The teacher sees him and tells him to go and answer the question on the board. He wonders how he would solve this when he didn't even pay attention in class. He then remembers Song Chorin, one of his classmates, teaching him in his past life and he accurately solves the question on the board. Everyone, including the teacher, is surprised to see him solve it, even though he was sleeping throughout the lecture. This causes the teacher to make him the class representative. 
After the class, Chu King places his head on his desk to prevent others from seeing him as he makes a new talisman. His best friend suddenly taps him and he quickly stops. He then gives the talisman to him for his protection. His friend tells him about the upcoming school sports events in two days and asks if he would join. Chu King says that he isn't interested, but his friend manages to persuade him eventually. After a while, a lady named Ling Winner comes looking for Chu Ting. She is the school idol that sings and plays the piano. She invites him to come along to a party hosted by a middle school friend, telling him that other middle school friends would also love to see him. After she leaves, Chu Ting goes to meet Tang Zian in her class and sees her doing her homework. She has been finding it difficult to solve the question, and Chu Ting offers to put her through. It's the same question he solved in class a while ago. After teaching her, he tells her to come with him and on getting outside, he gives her one of the protection artifacts he made. Back to the class, Chu Ting decides to make 30 more artifacts before the bell rings so he can take them to the Yi family as he promised. After a while, the bell rings and he packs all the artifacts he's made into his bag. He thinks of heading to Chen Xi's place, but his friend suddenly taps him and asks if he would love to hang out with them later at night. He declines and heads to Chen Xi's house. Chen Xi is so glad to see him again, she had been missing him. He gives her the protection artifact too, and while she wonders what it is for, he throws a glass cup at her. Suddenly, the talisman activates an energy barrier automatically which blocks the cup from hitting her. She gets excited and kisses him. She desires to sleep with him as a gift, but he tells her he's got business elsewhere and would come back to see her. He leaves and goes to Hua Wu's house. He meets her sleeping and wakes her. On seeing him, she becomes excited and hugs him. After she sleeps, Chu King discovers Hua Hua has been gathering information on the ancient martial arts family in the city for him. On his way back, he receives a call from his dad asking for his whereabouts so his mom can pick him up. After a while, his mom arrives and picks him up. His mom then asks him where he has been as she can perceive a woman's perfume on him. He lies to her and she advises him never to be alone with women. He receives a credit alert that Yi family just paid him 1.2 million yuan for the talismans he delivered to them. He reasons that if producing artifacts can make him this much then manufacturing elixirs would make him a fortune. On getting home, he goes to meet Jai Yu and gives him a protection artifact also. Jai Yu appreciates it and tells him that this is the first time someone would genuinely act toward him as a friend. They both share their ugly pasts and drink until they get drunk. Chu Ting returns home and meets his sister trying to sneak into the house since it's late already. She sees him and complains about him returning this late and reeking of alcohol. She soon passes out and falls into his hands. She is drunk also. Chu Ting takes her to her room, and when he tries to leave, his sister drags him to the bed. She starts to mention the name of a guy and tries to kiss him. He also, not knowing what he's doing due to his drunken state, tries to make out with her, but soon comes to his senses and realizes it was his sister. He quickly stands up and leaves the room, promising himself never to drink again. The next day, he goes shopping for some clothes in preparation for the reunion party and thinks that he would also need a car so he won't have to keep bothering Jai Yu. Then he sees one of his old classmates, Zhu Bu Kun. Zhao Bu Kun informs him about the reunion party he is organizing but Chu King tells him that Ling Wanner already invited him two days earlier. Zhu Bu Kun is surprised that Ling Wanner invited him personally, and he leaves in anger. Zhu Bu Kun used to bully Chu Tang and spread lies about him when they were in middle school. Chu Tang heads to a car showroom to buy a car. Some ladies see him and begin to think that a rich lady must be taking care of him. At night, he arrives in his car for the reunion party. He sees Tang Zian and asks her about Ling Wenner, who invited him, but she says it's none of her business. She then tells him about a bet Zhou Bu Kun made with everyone that Chu King will come for the party dressed in a school uniform, and if he loses, he would invite everyone to eat for a week. Zhou Bu Kun has lost his bet and is now angry. Zhou Bu Kun announces to everyone that they will be preparing for the Olympics Games, and he plans on making a male basketball team. He invites Chu Ting to join, trying to ridicule him, but he says he is not interested. Chu Ting then feeds Tang Zian, which makes Zhu Bu Kun feel jealous. Lovingly, Tang Zian asks him if he would join the basketball team, and he tells her he will join if he kisses her. She suggests a French kiss instead, and everyone starts to admire them, calling them a couple. Chu Ting then invites everyone to eat dessert at a nearby restaurant, all bills on him. It has now taken everyone's attention from Zhou Bu Kun, who hosted the party and made himself the center of attraction. 
After a while, Ling Wenher arrives and Zhu Bu Kun delightfully goes to welcome her. However, she leaves him and goes to meet Xu Ting. Zhu Bu Kun is asked to play the piano, and he invites Ling Wanner to dance while he plays. Ling Wanner tells everyone she is dedicating the dance to her best friend, Xu Ting. Tang Zanan starts to feel jealous that she is dancing for him. Meanwhile, Zhu Bu Kun gets angry that Xu Ting is talking to Tang Zian, while the girl he likes is dancing for him. He busts out in anger, however, Xu Ting ridicules his music, and he gets even angrier. He takes a fighting stance and demands an apology from him. Instead, Xu Ting tells him to say bye to his hands if he loses, and this makes him very afraid. He starts to sing a strange song, the song of the gods which he learned when he was converting to a god in his past life. A mist arises behind him and Zhu Bu Kun gets terrified. However, Ling Wenner steps in to stop Xu Tang. Tang Zian also tells him to stop, so he won't have problems later. Xu Ting was so influenced by the wrath of the song that he almost forgot that he was not in heaven. He takes a cutlery knife and cuts Zhu Bu Kun's hair. He tells him he is no longer the old Xu Ting. He could easily bully and warns him never to appear before him again. Zhu Bu Kun leaves in shame and the partying continues. After the party, Chu King perceives beer on himself and reasons that he can't go to his parents smelling like this. He calls his sister to tell her that he won't be coming home, and he decides to go to Hua Hua's house. On Gai Dur house, he meets her door open, and when he enters, he meets a man struggling with her. He tries to defend her, but soon discovers that it's her dad. Hua Hua's dad claims that she is owing him an amount of money, but she opposes saying that it was he who used the money to gamble. He claims it's his right to collect money from her. She throws her debit card at him in anger, but he says he will get the money from her boyfriend. Wangua tries to defend Xu Ting by saying he is just a student with no money. On hearing this, her father grabs her and tells her to consider selling her body to rich boyfriends instead. Chu King tells him that he will pay the amount he asked for, but he must sign a document stating that he would end the father-daughter relationship between them and never disturb her again. He first rejects but later agrees when Chu King threatens to cancel the offer. After he signs the document, Chu King turns a mug into a weapon using magic and injures him with it as a warning for what could happen if he ever disturbs Hua Hua again. He kisses Hua Hua, and they both sleep together through the night. The next morning, Hua Hua wakes Chu Ting and tells him she has something good for him. She had prepared a good meal for him for breakfast. He wonders why she is treating him specially, and she tells him that she doesn't want to lose him. He tells her not to worry about that and beat herself. After a while, he receives a message from Jai Yu saying he already sent the money he asked for, the same amount of money he wants to give Hua Hua's father. He then receives a message from Tang Zian asking him to come to the basketball club after school. At the basketball club, Tang Zian asks him about the new medicinal formula he told her he had. He gives her a piece of paper containing the formula he says would aid mages with magic upgrading. Tang Zian asks him if he trusts her. What if she runs away with it? However, he tells her that he doesn't care about the money, but genuinely wants to help her family. She tells him that she has fallen in love with him and goes on to kiss him. Later at night, in Chu King's house, his mother comes to meet him while he studies and asks if he likes any girl. His mother tells him that she is not bothered if he marries the person he loves, but her family won't allow him to do that, and she is powerless to protect him. She tells him that if he wants to marry the girl of his choice and get rid of the arranged marriage, he has to get into the National University. After a while, Chu King starts cultivating and summons his sword. He discovers that the sword seems different, it has rust on it, and if the rust doesn't disappear, there'd be huge consequences. He suggests that he might have gone through a different way during his cultivation process. He has to find a bowl for the sword as fast as possible and hide it because he could die if he doesn't. He receives a call from Jai Yu, yelling at him that he has been expecting him at the auction which is about to start. Chu King had slept off and forgotten that there was an auction. He heads to the auction immediately to see if he can find any spiritual material that is suitable to make the sheath of his sword. At the auction, some ladies see him and start to mock him because of how he is dressed. One of the ladies hits him and tells him that this isn't a place where poor people like him can be. He challenges her and she gets angry. She tries to hit him, but he grabs her hand and inflicts pain on her. Jai Yu sees them and defends Chu Singh while he bans the ladies that mocked him from the auction house. Jai Yu tells him about how he intercepted someone from the Chu family in the imperial capital who came to buy information concerning his second aunt, Chu King, who lost one leg and a kidney. 
Chu Ting pretends that he doesn't know anything about the death of his aunt. Chengxi and her mom arrive at the auction house, and Chengxi is excited to see Chu Ting again. Chu Ting and Chengxi head to the room, and Chu Ting checks the auction items list. He discovers that the spiritual stone he told Jai Yu about appeared in the auction. He then goes to give Chengxi a drink, and while at it, she draws him close to herself. She seduces him, and they soon start to make out. Jai Yu badges in and sees them. He apologizes for interrupting and quickly leaves. Chengxi tries to continue, but Chu King tells her that they should suspend it till another time. He is uncomfortable with Jai Yu around. Meanwhile, Jai Yu never left. He was just behind the door. Chu Ting calls him in, and he brings the information about all the items in the auction. However, Chu Ting checks through and can't find any spiritual golden material from the gods that could free his sword. Jai Yu takes the information from him and shows it to Chengxi instead, saying Chu King's eyes are too high. Chengxi sees an item, and as she observes it, Chu Ting zooms in and realizes that the item has the same material he is searching for. Suddenly, he overhears Tang Zian's voice from the auction room, bidding a huge amount for an item. He wonders why Tang Zian bidded such an amount and decides to find out the item being auctioned. He discovers it's the Tang family formula, and he wonders who must have auctioned it off. Zayu leaves to find out while Chu Ting goes back to meet Chengxi. He asks her why she doesn't care about her family's activities, but only cares about fooling around men. He asks her how she would be able to solve the problems in the family when she doesn't even concern herself with family matters. After a while, Zhaiyu returns to tell him how much was made on the spiritual stones. Chu Ting asks him who the buyer of Qiong Jiang is, the item he discovered to have the same material he is looking for. Zhaiyu tells him that it's against the rules to reveal the buyer, but Chu Ting tells him that he is only concerned about the bronze container and not the wine itself. Jai Yu is surprised and wonders if the container was also a treasure he misjudged. Chu King leaves Zai Yu and heads back home. On his way, he sees a road sign indicating an ongoing construction ahead. He can't find any cars on the road and wonders why he didn't see any construction when he was coming for the auction. Suddenly, a thunder strikes and he is shocked by the powerful aura around it. He surges into a nearby bush and comes out of his car to find out what's happening. He sees a lady in a purple robe an officer from the Jianwu department, approaching a woman and her subordinates. Chu Ting remembers that Chengxi had once told him about the Jianwu department. The government set them up due to the inability of the police to govern the ancient martial artist groups. The officer is there to obtain an auction item from the woman, claiming it belongs to her country. The woman asks the officer for a judgment order, the token to take action from the Jianwu department. The officer, pretending to want to bring out the order, suddenly attacks with a punch. She kills all of them in the blink of an eye and heads over to carry the auction item. Chu Ting discovers that it's Kong Jiang, the same item he is planning to obtain. The lady discovers someone is spying and tells him to come out. He comes out and the lady launches an attack immediately. He blocks her attack and summons his sword immediately. She lands him a kick in the face but doesn't affect him and he gives her a powerful punch which sends her flying. The lady brings out a gun with a terrifying murderous aura and shoots at him. Thinking that he is dead, she takes the item and starts to leave. However, Chu Ting suddenly stabs her from behind and she dies. Chu Ting is severely injured from the bullet's murderous aura, so he quickly starts to cultivate to seal his wounds right away. Chu Ting realizes that the more he tries to seal his wounds, the more they break open again and get worse. He wonders why and checks the gun that was used to shoot him. It's a normal gun, but he soon discovers that the murderous aura is stored in the bullet. He immediately heads to Chai Huawei's house. When Chai Huawei sees him, she becomes shocked and puts him on the bed. Chu Ting tells her to cut the rotten part of his wound out, but she is terrified and would not hurt him, so she calls Chengxi instead. When Chengxi arrives, she does it and ties up his wounds. The next morning, Chu Ting is relieved of his pain. Chengxi then challenges him for seeing Chai Huawei behind her, and he yells out in defense, saying since women are allowed to have multiple men. What stops him from having multiple women too? She asks him what happened, and he tells her he killed a messenger from Jan Wu who tried to kill him. Chengxi and Huagua become shocked. Chengxi analyzes the bullet and discovers it is Wang Chuan, and she wonders how he survived. She then asks him what the rank of the messenger was. He tells her he doesn't know and states that the lady wore a purple robe. Chengxi tells him the purple robe is the lowest ranking in the Jan Wu department and should not have the Wang Chuan bullets. 
After a while, Chu King's phone rings, and he immediately attempts to leave for school to avoid much talk from his dad. Chengxi and Huahua stop him, telling him to rest and heal from his wounds. He tells them he is already fine and shows them his wounds have completely healed. Chengxi is shocked that he healed from the wounds caused by Wang Chun in such a short time. She asked him how he managed to stop Wang Chun's aura from spreading throughout his body. He tells her it's a simple technique and would teach her if she wants to learn. She's excited, but he tells her he has to go to school now and leaves. Wabua tries to talk to her, but she ignores her and leaves also. At school, Chu King sleeps in class while the teacher teaches them. Song Chorin gets distracted, trying to wake him up. The teacher gets angry and bangs his table. She yells at him that he is disturbing others and tells him she will get his parents to come to the school. Song Chorin starts to plead for him, and he joins in pleading too. He promises her not to disturb others when next he is sleeping, and the whole class bursts into laughter. The teacher gets angrier and tells him to sleep if he wants to but threatens to call Song Chorin's parents if she fails to get to the top 10 in the exam. Chu King volunteers to do the exam for her, and the teacher says if he fails, she will embarrass them on the assembly ground in front of the whole school and let all the students know that young love is harmful to them. Chu Ting realizes that Song Chorin likes him. A student comes to report to Tang Zian that Chu Ting is cheating on her with Song Chorin. Tang Zian heads to bully Song Chorin with some of her classmates. She asks for Chu Ting and becomes shocked when she sees him putting his head on the table, thinking he is crying. She goes to meet him, but discovers that he is only sleeping. Song Chorin apologizes to Chu Ting for causing him trouble, but he tells her not to blame herself as he was the one who slept in class. He hugs her and tells her she will always be his friend. Tang Zian and Chu Ting then head to the cafeteria to have lunch. Tang Zian's friend Tao Yunio rebukes Chu Ting and tells him to apologize to Tang Zian for hugging another girl in her presence. Chu Ting protests that she should also apologize to him since many guys are chasing her. Chu Ting tells Tao Yunio that he doesn't need Tang Zian spoiling and should rather be spoiling her. Tao Yunio bursts out in laughter, and Tang Zian tells him he would have to become stronger than her if he wants to do that. Tao Yunio warns him to avoid other women, but he draws her closer and flirts. After a while, Tang Zian tells Chu Ting that the formula he gave her was tested and was not something that could help with the cultivation of martial arts. It was rather a recipe for poison. Chu Ting is shocked. However, Tang Zian tells him that the poison is still an important asset and offers to pay 200 million for it. Chu Ting is surprised and thinks he would be rich if he sold all his recipes. He then tells her he wants to buy some herbs from her family. He thinks of making more elixirs for Chengxi's mom. Tang Zian is surprised he wants to make elixirs and tells him that no man in the entire country is good at making elixirs, but she looks forward to it since it is him. She licks some food remnants on Chu Ting and he wonders what she is doing. Tang Zian is surprised and tells him that men would normally get embarrassed by this. She then tells him to stop training in martial arts. If it is for self-defense, she will protect him instead. She tells him he isn't looking so good and gives him a healing med. She threatens to break up with him if he doesn't stop training. She says she doesn't want her future husband to be impotent. Chu Ting returns home, and his dad rebukes him for not coming home the previous night. Chengxi walks in and makes an excuse for him. Chu Ting is surprised and asks her why she came to him. She gives him the Tang family healing med. Well, he already got one from Tang Zion. He collects it anyway and teaches her how to deal with Wang Chuan as promised. They go to Chu King's room and soon begin the cultivation. After a while, Chen Qi begins to cough and feel pain. He quickly gives her the healing med, but he discovers that the meridian is damaged anywhere his Reiki passes in her body. He realizes that while healing on Yi, his Reiki passed through her body instead, not her meridian. He then channels his Riki through her body, and she becomes relieved of the pain. He then realizes why Tang Zion said that the formula was poison. He reasons that the major difference between men and women in this world is the irregularity of the meridian. He then concludes that he has to get a hold of an ancient martial arts book. Chengxi leans towards him and tries seducing him, and then Chu King's father enters the room. He asks why they are on the bed since they told him they wanted to study. Chengxi says goodbye and quickly leaves while Chu King explains to his dad that there is nothing between them. Now alone, he thinks of how he'd craft his sword's sheath with the Kyong Jang. Meanwhile, two ladies from the Jianwu department 
visit the site where their colleague was killed to investigate the killer. One of the ladies in a green robe says her family arranged a fiance for her and the Chu family, and she is going to Jinmen to check him out. Chu Ting cultivates and finally makes a sheath for his sword and a mask to conceal his face whenever he is on a mission. He wonders why everyone is fighting over Kim on Jong. He receives a message from Chen Xi telling him to come to their house for dinner with her mom. At the Yi Mansion, Aunt Yi asks him about the elixirs, and he tells her it will be ready the following week. She tells him to name his price, but he asks to look at the Yi family's cultivation techniques instead. Aunt Yi rejects saying an outsider cannot possess the book as it has been passed through generations, except he is married into their family. Chu Ting protests that he will be the one to wed someone into his family, and not someone wed him into another family. Aunt Yi tells him it won't end well if Chu Ting continues training for ancient martial arts and advises him to quit. Chu Ting wonders why men are not allowed to train in martial arts, and he decides to go and ask Jai Yu. At Jai Yu's place, Jai Yu tells him that for men to cultivate, they must be castrated. Chu King gets shocked, and when Jai Yu offers to link him with a hospital to help him with the castration, he declines. He then asks where he can buy old self-defense techniques, but Jai Yu tells him that he can't get them anywhere since the families possessing the techniques guard them so much and prevent others from getting them. Chu Ting realizes that practicing old martial arts in this world will be difficult. He receives a message from Huawei stating that some packages have arrived from the Tang family. He goes to her house and refines the pills in isolation. He finally refines Quan Yi Dan, which increases the user's power by 30% for a short period. Huawei peeps as she is curious about what he is doing. He tells her he was refining pills, but Huawei finds it hard to believe since only an alchemist family can do that. They soon begin their romance. The next day at school, Chu Ting feels drowsy, he didn't sleep well the previous night. Yi Mao, Chen Xi's brother, meets him and tells him that his sister told him to bring him to her. Chu Ting follows him, and on getting to where Chen Xi is, Chen Xi offers him a drink. Chu King takes the drink, and drinks it immediately. Suddenly, he starts feeling dizzy, and realizes that Chen Xi has sedated him again. Chen Xi pushes him into her car, and takes him to a hotel room. She attempts to sleep with him. After sleeping with him, she gives him the book he requested, the Yi family's old martial arts. She then tells him that he has to be her future husband to open the book, and he gladly accepts. Excitedly, he draws her close and kisses her, passing some substance into her mouth. Cheng Xi wonders what it is, and he tells her she will soon find out. She starts to cultivate while Chu Ting goes through the book. He discovers that women in this world have meridians that enable them to absorb much spiritual power, while men do not. Otherwise, they will explode and die. He then reasons that he can change the method of the old martial arts to make men practice it without hurting themselves. Cheng Xi informs him that she has been able to break into a new level. Chu Ting tells her that he gave her King Yi, the wine in Kyong Zhang. She tests if she is now stronger than him, but Chu Ting shows her he is still more powerful. They soon begin another session of romance. On getting to school the next day, Tao Yunio meets him and tells him that Tang Xian wants to see him. He meets Tang Xian and she challenges him asking him where he was the previous night and what he was doing. He tells her that he slept with Cheng Xi in a hotel. Tang Xian gets furious and calls him shameless, but he protests and asks her if he will be the only one she sees in the future as her husband. She tells him that her family doesn't allow that, and he tells her he also has the right to see as many girls as he wants. He attempts to leave and tells her that they can go their separate ways if she can't accept him like that. She tells him what he did got her angry and she would love to kill Cheng Xi, however, since it would make him sad, she would give him a chance. She suggests that they have an arm wrestling competition, and if he loses, she will cut Cheng Xi's hands. Chu Ting agrees, but soon discovers that she is very strong. When he discovers that Tang Xian will overpower him, he uses the boosting pill and wins her. Tang Xian is shocked and wonders how he could beat her. Chu Ting tells her to keep her promise, and she tells him that she will let this pass, but if he cheats on her again, she will not forgive him. Chu Ting returns home to meet a strange lady in his house. She introduces herself as Gong Yu, his fiancée. He tells her he doesn't have a fiancée, and she shows him the marriage contract. It happens that his aunt and grandmother sign the contract. He gets angry, tears the document, and desires to beat her. He tells his parents he will be heading out for dinner, and Gong Yu decides to follow him, so they can get to know each other and develop feelings. On her way out, Chu Ting launches an attack, but Gong Yu dodges it. He launches another attack, and she resists him again. Chu Ting feels pain from the impact, 
and realizes she is stronger than Tang Xian. He reasons that he'd get hurt if the fight continues at this rate, so he summons his sword. She calms him down and tells him he is qualified to be her husband, considering his strength. However, he tells her he doesn't want to be her husband and would not marry anyone. She says there will be many consequences if he doesn't, and he tells her he will get into the National University. She mocks him and tells him it's been long since any man entered the National University. Two days later, while other students participate in sports, Chu Ting studies hard so he can be accepted into the National University and rub it on Gong Yu's face. Xiao Wu comes to where he is sitting and tells him about a game he has later in the day. Chu Ting replies that he doesn't have time for that, and Xiao Wu snatches the book he is reading from him and throws it away. Chu Ting gets angry and smashes a book on his head. He then tells him to go and get his book. Xiao Wu tries to hit Chu Ting, but he dodges his attack. Xiao Wu tries to attack him again, but Yu Mao holds him. He then bites Yu Mao's hand. Chu Ting grabs and tortures him, demanding an apology. Xiao Wu fakes an apology, and when he sees Tao Yunio, he pretends to be the victim. Chu Ting tells Tan Yunio that Xiao Wu attacked Yu Mao out of nowhere, and he can bit him, so he was trying to prevent Xiao Wu from continuing his violent acts. Tao Yunio leaves and goes to report to Tang Zhenyan. Then Tao Yunio begins to advise Tang Zhenyan to break up with Chu Ting as he is not fit for her, but Tang Zhenyan becomes furious. Tang Zhenyan starts to defend Chu Ting, and Tao Yunio tells her she is already losing herself. Meanwhile, Zhu Bukun follows Xiao Wu to challenge Chu Ting at the infirmary while he takes care of Yu Mao. He tells Chu Ting to apologize, but Chu Ting drops a bunch of keys and tells him to pick them up if he wants him to apologize. However, Zhu Bukun overlooks that and tells him that Zion said he should come for the basketball match. Chu Ting first disagrees but later agrees to come for the match. At the basketball court, Chu King sees that many people are present, and he reasons that the girls like to see the boys play basketball. Zhang Xiv shows Chu Ting two seats prepared for him and Yi Mao to sit while they wait to join the game. Chu Ting discovers that one of the seats has glue on it. They are trying to get revenge on him. He pretends to want to sit on it, and sits on the other one instead. This pains Zhang Xiv. Tang Xian meets him and shows him a paper with writing, asking him how it feels to sit on the sideline. He takes the paper and replies to her, saying she shouldn't sit on the seat beside him. However, it was already late. She had sat on it already. She immediately tries to stand up, but the glue tears her trouser, revealing her underwear. She yells at Chu Ting for not telling her on time. She removes her top, ties it around her waist, and seduces him. Chu Ting quickly removes his top and covers her with it, saying he doesn't want others to see her body. She removes it anyway and returns to her seat beside Lai Wanjer, Jingmen Second High School's president. The game starts. Chu King commends his team but notices something off about the other team. Lai Huanzhi asks Tang Zian if Chu Ting is her boyfriend and brings up a deal that if her team wins, Tang Zian will have to lend him to her for a month, and if otherwise, she will run without her clothes on. Tang Zian first declines but eventually accepts to prove her team will win. Lai Huanzhi tells her team to show their real abilities, and the gameplay changes immediately. They have been playing poorly on purpose. Chu King considers the other team and still feels something fishy about them. Tang Zian tells him to join the game, and he refuses, saying he only came to sit on the reserves. Tang Zian tells him how critical the situation is, and he says he will only play if Zhu Bukun cheers for him. He joins the game, and he improves the performance of his team. He charges the other team, approaches the basket and scores a point for his team. As the game continues, he deliberately throws the ball to one of his opponents instead of passing it to his teammates. Everyone gets shocked and wonders what he just did. As the opponent runs with the ball and makes his way to basket it, Chu Ting draws down the shorts, and it is revealed that she is a woman, not a man. The other team is disqualified, and Chu King's team wins. Three days later, Chu Ting studies the male anatomy in class, trying to find a way to help men practice the ancient martial arts. Yu Mao tells him that Tang Zian wants him to come to Ting Yu Martial Arts Stadium the next day. Chu Ting wonders why she wants to see him at the training grounds. The next day at the stadium, Chu King meets her, and Tang Zian challenges him to a fight. He asks her why they are fighting, but she tells him she will tell him when he loses. However, he wins the fight. Tang Zian is surprised he could beat her and asks if he is still practicing martial arts against her instructions. He tells her not to worry about him and assures her she won't be a widow. 
they soon begin romancing themselves. Ting Yu arrives at the stadium with Zhu Buken and his cohorts. Zion introduces Chu Tsing as her boyfriend, and she introduces Ting Yu as her nanny. Chu Ting is shocked, wondering how Ting Yu fed Zian with milk when she was little. Being a man, Ting Yu shows her the guys he brought, and Zion punishes them for boycotting Chu Ting and putting glue on his seat. Meanwhile, Ting Yu tells Chu Ting to follow him so he can help him carry some medicines. Chu Ting follows him just to respect Zion. They get to a place, and Ting Yu spitefully begins questioning Chu Ting about his family and what they do. Chu Ting responds quite rudely, and Ting Yu becomes angry. He raises his and slaps him. Chu King gets angry and gives him a kick which sends him flying. Tang Zian is shocked. She quickly runs to Chu Ting to ask what happened. He tells her Ting Yu told him he doesn't deserve her and should stay away. Ting Yu says Chu Ting will never become the ruler of the Tang family. He replies that he won't marry anyone, not even when Zian begs him. Chu Ting then tells him that anyone who slaps him dies, but he is exempted only because of Tang Zian. Ting Yu talks arrogantly again, and Chu King darts his sword at him, but he quickly dodges it. Ting Yu becomes terrified. Meanwhile, at the John Wu department, they hold a meeting regarding the death of their colleague. One of the members tells Gong Yu that no suspicious character was found, but that they found something quite interesting. She then brings out a very valuable item and shows it to Gong Yu, saying it is the latest item in the Shizhen auction. Gong Yu suspects that Jia Yu is hiding something and tells her to find someone who has been around Jia Yu recently. Gong Yu goes to Chu King's house to visit him, but doesn't meet him. She sees something on his table. Tang Zian is mad at Chu Ting. He runs after her, apologizing for what he did to her nanny. She tells him he is strong and thinks he is even better than herself. She later tells him she is upset because of what he said earlier about not marrying her, even if she kneels and begs him. Chu Ting assures her that they will be together forever and kisses her. After kissing her, he notices a woman sitting on the roof of a building, waiting for him. He observes her and discovers that she is stronger than him. He tells Zilian he is an old friend and says she should go home first while he talks to her. Zion first refuses, but eventually yields and starts running home. The lady launches an attack. He turns and starts running. The lady chases him, suddenly turns away and chases after Zion instead. He sees this and quickly turns to save Zion. Just as the lady is about to catch Zion, Chu Ting suddenly appears before her. She lifts him by the next and asks him what the martial arts technique he just used is. He offers to sleep with her so she can leave him, but she carries him to another place instead. Gong Yu appears in a green robe with the Wang Chuan bullets as they talk. Gong Yu tells the lady to leave him to her, but she belittles her ability. Gong Yu gets angry, and they both face themselves. Chu Ting reasons that even if he runs, he can't escape from them, so he uses this opportunity to stab the lady with her sword, thus killing her. Chu Ting becomes shocked when he discovers that the lady in the green robe is Gong Yu. Gong Yu discovers she has always been with the killer of the lady in the purple robe. She asks why he killed her, and he says she had an item and killed many people too. Gong Yu threatens to shoot him, but he tells her she will lose her fiance if she shoots. She tells him to look for a room where she can ask him a question. In the room, she shows him a picture of a male anatomy she saw in his room and asks him where he got it from. He tells her he drew it, and she becomes shocked and asks him if he can make a training method. She takes back her words that he can't get into the National University and makes a deal that she would help him solve Xi Zheng's business while he has to heal her. He wonders what is wrong with her, and after observing her, he tells her that her training and physical methods are contradictory, making her fat. She becomes excited that he can cure her and begins to tell him information about the Chu and the Gong family. Chu Ting realizes that Mr. Chu's family needs to consolidate their position, so they want him to marry into the Gong family. Chu King tells her he wants the Wang Chuan bullets, but she refuses, saying it's not part of their agreement. Chu Ting brings out the Kuan Yi pill, which increases the user's strength by 30% after swallowing. She likes the effect and asks for more in exchange for the Wang Chuan bullet. After, Chu King touches her head and makes her feel better. She asks him if he can help her make training methods that suit her physique. He tells her that it is not easy to make training methods and that her spiritual roots, foundation stones, and other things have been taken from her for a long time. She is shocked by how he knows. Chu King tells her that her family took them from her. She gets angry and points the gun at him, but Chu Ting tells her she must continue cultivating to get revenge. She gets angrier and shoots at him, but he dodges it. She starts to bleed from her head. 
She is downcast by how her family took her spiritual roots from her. Chu King says he will go to the imperial capital and try his best to help her. He then tells her not to practice for a while so she won't explode and die. Meanwhile, Zion takes her second aunt along in searching for Chu Ting. Zian receives a call from him, assuring her that he is fine. Chu Ting returns home and tells his parents that Gong Yu will not join them for dinner as she is on a flight returning to the capital and will not proceed with the marriage anymore. Meanwhile on the plane, someone brings a document containing a list of those that have been in contact with Zhai Yu recently. She goes through it and sees Chu Ting among them. She feels that their destiny is connected. Chu King goes to his sister's room to check if her bed is broken since Gong Yu has been sleeping there for some days. He sees a deep hole in her bed and calls his sister to know how she would react. Xiao Tao, her sister's boyfriend, picks up the call instead and he decides to prank him, so he pretends to be his sister's boyfriend. Sing Tao becomes sad and doesn't believe Chu Xiao when she says it is her younger brother. Chu Ting later identifies himself as her brother, and he becomes calm. At school, Chu Ting talks with Zhou Buken and his cohorts. They already see him as their boss. He tells them he wants them to practice ancient martial arts, and they become scared because of what happens to men who practice it. He tells them not to worry as his training differs from regular training. He has successfully created exercises suitable for men and needs someone to try iron. However, it is completely safe. Chengxi arrives and begins to talk to him. Then someone from the Tang family walks up to him and tells him her boss is looking for him. He heads to the car and sees Zian's mother and Ting Yu sitting in it. He realizes that Zian's mom is also hostile towards him, so he leaves if they have nothing to say. Zian arrives and asks why he is there. He suddenly kisses her to annoy her mother. Zian enters the car and leaves with her mom. Meanwhile, Chengxi saw him while he kissed Zian. She pushes him into her car and makes love with him there. After Chu King takes his leaves, he receives a strange call from his sister asking him to take care of their parents. A woman collects the phone and tells him to get to her, within 30 minutes of her sister would be dead. Chu King calls Zhai Yu to find out about the group that took his sister. Zhai Yu tells him she is very powerful and he won't be able to save him if he has messed with them. Chu Ting goes anyway since his sister has been captured. On getting there, he sees a lady man handling his sister and he dashes at her. The boss arrives, and Chi Xiao starts telling him to run away quickly. But he puts her to sleep while he faces the boss. He asks her why she did this to his sister, and promises death to anyone involved. They soon begin to combat, and Chu Ting realizes she is incredibly fast and strong. He takes one of his pills to boost his strength and immediately summons his sword. However, the boss still overpowers him. He then decides to handle the matter another way, otherwise she will kill him. He asks her what really happened, and she tells him that his sister slept with someone she wasn't supposed to sleep with, the mayor's son, and the mayor ordered her to kill her. He asks if she can let his sister go, and she shows him a mark on her face caused by her sister. She demands money, but he offers her a spiritual stone instead. She asks that he spends the night with her, and they soon head to a room. After a lovemaking session, she appears with a siren and asks them to go again. Chu Ting refuses and leaves. He carries his sister home, and on getting home, he meets their dad, who yells at him for returning late. He tells his dad that his sister was kidnapped, and he was called to the police station to come and pick her up. His dad gets scared and worries why there's a situation around their family of recent, even his mom's company. Chu Ting is surprised to hear about an issue with his mom's company, but his father does not tell him when he asks. He calls Chen Xi and discovers it has something to do with Tang Xian's mother. The next day, he heads to his mom's company for the first time, and a lady shows him the way to the general manager's office. On their way, the lady flirts with him, and they suddenly see President Chu, Chu King's mom. She is surprised to see him and asks what he is doing at the company. The lady apologizes for bringing a stranger into the company and lies that Chu King is her nephew. However, Chu Ting tells his mom she wants to sleep with her. Chu King's mom fires the lady immediately and takes Chu Ting to her office. In the office, she tells him that his father told him about the incident with Chu Xiao of the previous night and asks what really happened. He narrates the whole situation to her, and she is shocked that only he went to a place like that to save his sister. He assures his mother that he and his sister are fine and goes on to demonstrate martial arts to her to prove that he can protect himself and the family. She is surprised and asks if it is Chengxi teaching him martial arts, as he has greatly changed since he met her. Chengxi suddenly arrives 
and says she heard something happen to the company, so she has come to see if she can help. Chu King's mother tells her that someone put a virus in the company's system, which paralyzed all the computers, but the technical department is fixing the problem already. Chu Ting suggests that Hua Dua comes to check the issue. When Hua Bo arrives, she is scared to look at Chengxi, as Chengxi is still mad at her. Chu Ting asks if Chengxi can help him get a gun. He plans to use it for Wan Chuan bullets so he can solve his sister's problems with the mayor. He bids Chengxi goodbye and says he wants to go and see Hua Bo. She gets angry and takes him to the toilet to have a thing with him again, but he refuses. She warns him not to interfere when she is dealing with any woman that comes near him. Chu King leaves and heads to Vermilion Bird Road to search for his sister's boyfriend's house. He seeks to know if his sister's boyfriend is on his sister's side or is like his father the mayor, so he can know how to use some tricks to change the situation. On getting to the house, he is surprised to see Tang Zion. He meets her, and she asks him why he has not been in school. She thinks it's because of what her mother did to him and his mom's company. He tells her it's not because of her and says he just wanted to relax. He then asks about Meng Zhu and she tells him that Meng Zui is the second of the ten masters in Jinmen and is responsible for the biggest black deal in Jinmen. She tells him all he needs to know about the other masters, and Chu King thinks of meeting Huabua to help him gather information about them. At Huawa's house, Huabua tries to seduce him. He tells her he came for something different. He asks her to help him gather all the important information about the Ming family for his sister's safety. Suddenly, Chengxi arrives and Chu Ting thinking it is an intruder, quickly summons his sword and launches an attack, but stops when he sees it is her. He asks her how she managed to enter when he locked the door, and she tells him she has the key. Chu King takes the key from her and throws it in the trash can, telling her not to bully Hua Bua again. She gets angry and leaves, and after a while, she returns with a gun. Chu Ting tries to calm her, but she shoots at them. Chu Ting protects Hua Bua and runs towards Chen to stop her. She then gives him the gun as he requested earlier. He sees that the gun is suitable for the third level Wang Chuan bullet he got from Gong Yu and accepts it. Chengxi says she will be staying for the night and gets clingy and Hua Hua gets jealous. Chi King tells her to see a movie while he and Hua Hua work on his homework. He and Hua Hua continue to gather information about the Xing family's house. Chengxi suspects they might be having a thing together, so she interrupts them repeatedly. Chu King gets pissed, carries her to her car, and pushes her inside. She draws him in as he tries to leave, and they start romancing. After they finished sleeping with each other, Chu King returned to Chai Huagua to continue what they were doing. Chu King goes to the Xing family's house and sneaks in. He almost gets caught by a granny named Xing Wei, Jingmen's number one expert. He peeps at Xiao Tou through the window and sees him looking at his sister's picture. He concludes that he still has feelings for his sister, and goes in to meet him. Shoto blames himself for bringing Chu Xiao into his mess and tells him that his mom wants to forcefully marry him off to Tang Zimian. Chu King gets shocked and tells him to help him provide an opportunity to see his mom so he can talk with her. He tells him to distract Sing Wei for 30 minutes while he goes to see his mom. Chu Ting goes to a lady's room and waits for her while she bathes. She finishes from the bathroom, and on returning to the room, she sees him on the bed with a mask on. She smiles and moves towards him to kiss him, thinking he is the new guy sent by the Lai family. Chu Ting feels he is treated like a human toy. Everyone wants to sleep with him. He headbutts her and knocks her out. He then heads to Xiao Tou's mom, Xing Lai, office. Meanwhile, Xiao Tou pretends to want to commit suicide, so Xing Wei leaves to attend to the situation, giving Chu Ting a chance to enter the office. He reveals himself as Chu Xiao's brother and tells her to allow Xiao To and his sister to get married. She tells him he cannot allow Xiao To to marry someone from a filthy family background. She discovers that he brought a third-level Wang Chuan bullet and laughs. Chu King gets surprised and quickly carries the gun to shoot her. However, she is faster than him. She lands him a kick before he can shoot and takes the gun from him. He commends his excellence and says if only his family had half of Tang's family background, she will allow Xiao To to marry his sister. She sees that the bullet in the gun is from the Gong family, and she asks if he is related to them. Chu replies that he has an engagement with the Gong family. She doesn't believe him, so he proves it by showing her the marriage contract between her and Gong Yu. She checks it and discovers that he is Mr. Chu's grandson. However, she tells him that his mother is an outcast in the Chu family and hides in Jingmen just to survive. Chu King says they should forget the Chu family and discuss something else. 
she returns the contract to him, and he tears it into pieces. She tells him that she is nice to him because he is Chu and Lan's grandson, and Chu and Lan is a respectable senior to her. Sing Wai returns and informs her that her daughter is missing. She gets angry, grabs Chu Ting by the neck, and lifts him, demanding her daughter's whereabouts. He negotiates that she should forgive his sister, but she tells him she will kill him instead. She tells Sing Wei to search for her daughter since she will still be around the house. He checks his phone and is surprised that Huabo has not given him feedback on what he asked her to do. Sing Lai thinks he is trying to call someone to rescue him. After about an hour, she hasn't seen any reinforcement, so she asks him why no one is there yet. He tells her he didn't come without having a backup plan, and she mocks him for thinking he still has a chance to win. She tells him she is a fourth grade master and belongs to the realm of heroes. He replies that he doesn't care about that, but it doesn't mean she's got no weaknesses. She gets shocked and tries to call someone, then Sing Wai returns to inform her that they have found her daughter. Meanwhile, Huabua already sent the picture of a man to Chu Ting. Sing Lai attempts to attack him, but he shows her the man's picture, and she becomes shocked. Sing Wei tries to attack him, and he threatens to hurt the man if they hurt him. Sing Lai tells Sing Wei to leave it to her, and she asks him for his conditions. He tells her to let his sister marry Cho Tao. She replies that she will grant it only if his sister can buy a house in Sang Street within a year, or she will marry into the Xang family instead. Chu Ting tells her to write it as a contract and tells her to inform Meng Zui to back off. He tries to leave, and she tells him to wait. She tells him to keep things about the man a secret. She returns his gun and gives him three third-grade Wang Chu and bullets as gifts. On his way back, he sees Sing Lai's daughter. She begins to yell at him for hurting her and attempts to slap him, but he blocks her hand and tells he not to bother him. She then reveals that she was the one who inflicted pain on his sister. On hearing this, he slaps her hard and tells her it's for his sister. Sing Wei tries to fight him, but Sing Lai stops her and lets him go. On his way out, he tells Sing Lai that her children lack discipline. Sing Lai then tells Sing Wei to send Liu to a Wang Chuan training camp and look for a good teacher for Tao. Sing Wai protests, saying Liu could die as the training at the camp are always rigorous. Sing Lai replies that it means her life is worthless and suggests that nothing stops Shou Tao from inheriting the family. She now believes that men are as good as women because of how Chu King is. Sing Wei is shocked and wonders if Chu King has influenced her. Chu Ting returns to Wawa. She becomes emotional when she sees him. She was scared that he wouldn't make it out alive. He tells her he got beat up by two old women and needs to rest. The next morning, he receives a call from Tang Zian while lying on the bed. She asks him why he isn't yet in school, and he tells her to tell the teacher that he is sick and can't come to school. Zian tells him that the teacher will call his parents if he doesn't come, and he is surprised. She reminds him of his bet with the homeroom teacher on making it to the top 10 in her test. He quickly gets up and runs to school while the teacher is about to start the test. He apologizes for coming late and goes to his seat for the test. After the test, Song Chiren asks him if he is confident about making it to the top 10. Chu Ting assures her, telling her he answered all the questions. Tang Zian and Tao Yunio approach them, and Yunio soon begins to bully Song Chiren for flirting with Zian's man. Zian stops her and asks if he'd join them and have lunch. Chu Ting agrees and invites Song Chiren along, but she excuses herself and leaves out of fear. Chu Ting sees Yi Mao, who is shy to declare his feelings to Yu Niao. Yi Mao tries to escape, but Chu Ting grabs and takes him along. Zion asks if he is Chen Xi's brother, and Chu Ting is embarrassed, so he quickly heads for lunch with Yi Mao. At the lunch table, Zion asks Chu Xing if he thinks he can really make it to the top 10, but he replies that he doesn't know. Zion then asks him if he has been with Chen Xi for the past few days, but he claims that he has been busy and quickly changes the topic telling Yi Mao to confess his feelings to Yu Niao. Yu Mao becomes embarrassed, and Chu Ting asks Yu Niao what he thinks about him. Yu Niao challenges Chu Ting to confess his own feelings first, if he wants her to tell him how she feels about Yi Mao. Chu Ting quickly confesses that he likes Sinian. Zian asks him what Cheng Xi is to him if he claims he likes her. Chu Ting asks who said that he could only like one person. Zian gets angry and kicks him. As Yu Niao tries to say he doesn't like Yi Mao, he quickly confesses that he loves her and begins to tell her about how he has known her since they were little. Yunio always competed and won in food contests, which attracted him to her. Yunio remembers who he is and becomes embarrassed. 
She smashes Yi Mao's head on the food before him and leaves. Zion leaves too, leaving Yi Mao and Chu Ting at the table. Yi Mao tells Chu Ting how embarrassed he is and tells him to give him a heads up before he does it the next time so he can mentally prepare himself. Chu Ting returns home and is surprised to meet Huo Avu at talking with his mother. His mom tells him that she invited her over for dinner to thank her for helping with the problem at the company. She tells him she wants to see him privately, and he follows her to the room. In the room, his mom asks him about his relationship with Wawa, and he replies that they are just friends. She tells him that she suspects they have a thing together, and says that he used to like Chengxi, and now he is with another girl. His mother tells him that he has to have some self-respect, being a boy. Chu Ting tells her that he plans to marry them into the family. His mom can't believe her ears and calls him crazy. Chu Ting tells her that he is a grown man and she should lecture his elder sister, who has a boyfriend instead. She tells him that his sister has been on the phone all day and tells him to go and call her for dinner. Chu Ting heads to her room and meets on a video call with Sing Tao. After a while, she hangs up and tells him that Sing Tao said his mom has now agreed to their relationship. She thanks him for helping her. But he asks her if she can meet Sing Lai's condition of getting a house in Zhuk Street within a year, without which she will have to marry another family. Chu Xiao is shocked, but Chu Ting tells her he has a way to go about it. He tells her to focus on helping her mom at the company to ease the burden on her. He returns to Wuabua and asks if she would love to work at his mom's company. She responds with a yes, and Chu Ting kisses her. Meanwhile, his mom is watching them from her room. Discovering that she saw them, Hua Hua becomes embarrassed and quickly heads home. Chu Ting returns inside and tells his mom he wants Hua Hua to work at the company. His mom tells him there is no vacancy, but Chu Ting tells her they can expand the company and create a new department that she can manage. His mom asks him why she would want the company to grow that big, and he replies that it's because of the Chu family. He further says he won't marry into the Gong family and is unafraid of Chu and Lan. On hearing this, his mom shuts him up and tells him to return to his room immediately. His mom later goes to his room to apologize for being too harsh. She tells him that she has been tolerating them, giving them an advantage over her, but that will change from now on. Chu Ting thinks he only has Meng Zui left to deal with and heads to her place. He gives her the writing Sing Lai gave him, ordering her to back off his sister. Meng Zui asks him how he could pull that off, but he doesn't respond and attempts to take his leave. She appears immediately behind him and grabs him seductively. Chu Ting kisses her, and she forcefully pushes him away. She then draws him with some power and grabs him by the neck, asking him why he kissed her. Chu Ting frees himself from her grasp and threatens to make her regret her actions. She demands an apology and payment for what he did. Chu Ting willingly apologizes, but she still asks about the money. Chu Ting is surprised, and she reminds him about agreeing to pay an amount of money when he came to save his sister the other day. He tells her he doesn't have money, and she asks him to give her his sword instead. He also says he is not with it, but she doesn't believe it and tells him that he made the sword appear out of nowhere the previous time. She asks what technique he used to hide the sword and tells him she will forget about the money and sword if he teaches her the technique. He tells her she is too greedy, summons his gun and shoots at her. However, she resists the Wang Chuan bullets and brings out her own special gun too. He offers to give her a hundred spirit stones as he gave her the last time, but she refuses and tells him it isn't enough. He then throws an item to her, which boosts her power after she absorbs it, and she requests for more. Chu Ting promises to give her one about the size of his fist, and she allows him to leave. After he leaves, she smiles, mocking that she would make him her male pet, which will never elude her grasp. On the other hand, Chu Ting plans to conquer and marry her into his family. The next day, Chu Ting goes to his mother's company to see how Huawa is doing in her new job. Huawa is loved and respected by everyone for her amazing job. Chu Ting teases her by calling her director. Huawa tells him that he requested that his mom employ her as a technical consultant, but she made her the director instead. After that, Chu Ting heads to school and on getting to school, he notices a lot of whisperings around among the students. Yi Mao walks up to him and tells him that the test scores have been released and there's a rumor that he didn't make it to the top 10. He asks if Chu Ting is already done preparing his apology speech to be presented in the assembly the next morning. However, Chu Ting does not accept that he didn't make it to the top 10. In the class, the homeroom teacher Tan Fi tells Chu Ting to come with his parents the next day, but he protests that he is confident he made it to the top 10. The teacher says he got first place in his class, but 11th place in his grade, 
and accuses him of cheating to even achieve that. Chu Tsing requests evidence to show he cheated, and she tells him they will go to the security room to review the footage in the security camera. Zilan and Yunio join in the security room as they review the class footage during the test. Chu Ting is not seen cheating, teacher Tong is shocked. Chu King calls their attention to the student that was seen cheating, and they summon the student to the security room. The principal tells the director to handle the situation, and she takes her to leave. The director apologizes for the trouble they caused Chu Ting, and they all leave the security room. On their way back, Zion congratulates him for making it to the top 10 and being the first male who ever did. He is surprised, and she explains that one of the girls on the top 10's list was removed due to cheating, making him, in the 11th position, enter the top 10. Everyone starts to admire Chu Ting, the first male who made it to the top 10, and his relationship with Zian. Many days after the cheating incident, Teacher Tong introduces a new student to the class, La Yu Wei. Chu Ting is shocked. He remembers La Yu Wei used to be Zian's fiance. After the class, Chu Ting talks with Zian about La Yu Wei joining her school, and she asks him if he is jealous. He refuses to admit he is, and Zian pecks him. Meanwhile, La Yu Wei spies on them, and he gets jealous and angry. Zhu Bu Ken and the other two meet Chu Ting and tell him how La Yu Wei has been spreading rumors about him to spoil his reputation. They ask him if he wants them to take him to the restroom and beat him up, but he tells them not to bother about him much. He thinks that Zian's mum is the main problem and reasons how he can change her mind towards him. Bu Ken tells him that they have been practicing the cultivation technique he taught them, and there have been no side effects. He measures the status of their respective realms and encourages them. He then gives them spirit stones to help them cultivate faster. After they leave, he lies in a nearby bush and thinks about whether he will ever be able to leave this world or even be willing to leave, considering the people close to him. Yu Niao, Yi Mao, and Xu Ting have lunch together, and Zion joins them, with Lai Yu Wei tagging along. Zion sits at the table, Xu Ting is seated, and Lai Yu Wei joins reluctantly. Yunia takes Yi Mao to leave the three to their issues and not interfere. Chu Ting and Zian are all lovey dovey, which makes Lai Yu Wei jealous and demands attention from Zian. After a while, Zian heads to the toilet, and Lai Yu Wei warns Chu Ting to stay away from Zian, threatening him about the last time he tried to attack him with his bodyguards. Zian meets him ranting and threatening Chu Ting, and she sends him away. Chu Ting brags that he has greatly helped Zian and asks her how she will thank him. She tells him it is his duty as her boyfriend to chase other men away. La Yu Wei takes Chu Ting's picture to an assassin, asking him to kill Chu Ting. Later, as Chu Ting heads to his car, he receives a message from Meng Zhu, showing him his sister's picture. He gets shocked and wonders if Meng Zhu has captured his sister again, against their agreement. He later discovers that his sister is fine after calling her. As soon as he hangs up the call and enters his car, he immediately senses danger in his car and quickly jumps out while it explodes. He leaves in a taxi and calls Zhu Bukan to check the CCTV in the parking lot to find out who did it. Chu King goes to Meng Zui's residence. He wonders if Meng Zui sent her men to blow up his car. On getting inside, he discovers that Meng Zui has gotten stronger in the last few days. He asks her why she is looking for him, and she doesn't give any tangible reason. He tries to leave immediately, but she dashes at him and stops him. She then tears his clothes off his body, and he accuses her of looking for him because she is hot and wants to satisfy herself. She confesses, and Chu Ting immediately draws her closer, and they soon start their romance. She asks him to be her pet, and she will keep his sword and its secret for him. He asks her if she will forgive him if he does something wrong, and she says she won't be mad at him. She then asks him to immediately bring out his sword and show her its secret, but he tells her that she can't get angry after showing her something. She becomes curious about what he wants to show her. He breaks the glass walls of her apartment and flies out of it, escaping her grasp. Meng Zhu gets angry and tells him she will kill him when they meet next. She says that his sister still works as a bartender at the complex anyway, and she would be able to get her revenge. Chu Ting calls Zhu Bukun to find out if they have found the person who blew his car, and Zhu Bukun tells him that it was done by someone La Yu Wei hired. He further tells Chu Tsing that he found out that La Yu Wei will be picking someone up from the airport by midnight. Chu King gets angry and heads to go and find La Yu Wei, but Tang Zion meets him along the way. She tries to talk him out of doing it because of the consequences it could attract from the Li family, on both his family and the Yi family. 
However, he doesn't listen and tells her not to worry about his problems. As he leaves, he meets Chengxi. Chengxi tells him her mom forced her to come and stop him, but she will be fighting alongside him instead. Aunt Yi soon arrives to tell Chu Ting it isn't the right time to do this, even though she wishes to repay him for saving her life and her family. He tells her he doesn't need any help and can handle the Lai and the Tang families, such that Jinmen will respect the Yi family in the future. Zion's mom appears and tells him to cut the crap. Chu King ignores her and leaves anyway. She gets angry and attempts to attack him, but Aunt Yi stops her and tells her she must go through her first. At the airport, Chu King sees an old woman who is a master guarding Lai Yu Wei. Lai Yu Wei is surprised that he is not dead and asks why he is at the airport. Chu Ting tells him he has come to kill him, and the old woman interrupts. He tells him to take the fight outside. Getting outside, the old woman tells him that she is ranked fourth in the Lai family and goes on to launch an attack. Chu King dodges it, and she launches even more attacks at him. Chu blocks all the attacks using a sword defense technique. He then sends many sword attacks at her. She gets distracted and tries to block them. But Chu Ting suddenly appears in her front and stabs her with his sword, killing her. Lai Yuwei's other bodyguard attempts to shoot him, but he is faster. He summons his gun and shoots both of them with the Wine Chuan bullet, thus killing them. He takes the flower Lai Yuwei was carrying and wonders if he has got a big catch since Lai Yuwei, with the protection of a master, came to welcome someone at the airport. Meanwhile, the Tang and Yi families have been fighting. Lai Dian, the Lai family's head, the Lai family, and the elder of the Lai family arrive at the scene. Lai Yan tells Aunt Yi to get lost so she can go and save her son, but she refuses. She gets angry and attempts to attack, but Meng Zui steps in between them. She is surprised to see three powerful families gathered together in the same place and sarcastically asks them if they want to choose the ruler of Jinmen City. The elder from the Lai family attempts to attack her, but Meng Zui damages her in one hit. They all get shocked. She tells them she has no business with them and says she has come to kill someone. Zion's mother asks her who the person is, and she tells them that he is at the airport. Lai Yan tells Meng Zhu that she is going to the airport, too, and offers to give her some high-level healing medicines. Meanwhile, at the airport, Chu Ting welcomes the guest Lai Yu Wei was waiting for. She asks him why Lai Yu Wei is not there to pick her up, and he tells her he has killed him already. He then knocks her out and carries her out of the airport. On getting out, he sees a car and puts her in it. As he drives, he sees Lai Yan and Meng Zui driving opposite him. He raises his gun and fires at them. They escape from their respective cars, but Lai Yan is injured while Meng Zui comes out unscathed. Meng Zui allows Chu Ting to escape. As Chu Ting continues driving, he calls Cheng Xi to pick up his family and allow them to stay at the Yi family's mansion for some days. Cheng Xi asks her mom, and she agrees, hoping Chu King will fulfill his promise of making Jinmen respect the Yi family in the future. Lai Yan discovers that Meng Zui also wants to kill Chu Ting and tells them to merge so they can get in together. She becomes shocked when she realizes that Meng Zui let Chu Ting escape, and Meng Zui tells her that Chu Ting can only die in her hands and nobody else's. Lai Yan says she will let him go and kill anyone close to him. She brings out the Cheyenne reagent and pours them on her wound. She realizes that the medicine is poor, even though it was made with the Tang family's prescription, compared to the one the Tang family makes themselves. She then reasons that she must bring an important person from the imperial capital to destroy the Tang family. Lai Yan asks her subordinate about the important person from the imperial capital. She replies that Chu King left with her, and she gets very angry. Meanwhile, Chu Ting realizes he could easily be tracked with the car and the lady's phone, so he stops and blows it up along with her cell phones. He carries the lady to the Yunsheng River in Yunshan Mountain and throws her into the river to wake her up. He reasons that women in this world are not to be treated gently, and he could die if he has a soft heart in the situation. The lady regains consciousness and becomes scared, thinking she has died and it is in the afterlife. She later realizes she is still alive and yells at Chu Ting. Chu Ting tortures her as he asks for her name, and she tells him it is Kao Wei. He asks her further questions, and when she refuses to talk, he tortures her. She tells him she is a student who deals in the study of medicines, and Lai Nian hired her so she could develop drugs for her. Chu Ting doesn't believe her. He wonders how a dignified family like the Lai family would hire a college student. He carries her to the deeper side of the river on the jetty, and threatens to throw her in for the fish to eat if she doesn't talk. He then asks why the Lai family likes her, and she reveals that she is a student at the National University. 
the university had to release her against her will when a powerful family came to demand for her. He tells her they should go together to get a change of clothes for her, but she tells him her leg is numb and she can't stand up. He tries to help her up, but she drags him so he can fall in the river. However, Chu Ting drags her along too. She becomes scared and offers to work for him. Well, she plans to make poison and kill him with it. Chu Ting brings her out of the water, and soon, she sleeps beside him while he provides her with his magic warmth. Meanwhile, Meng Zhu calls her subordinates to go and kidnap Chu Xiao. As Chu Xiao walks home after work, some ladies cross her and attempt to attack her. Another set of ladies from the Tang family arrives to save her, and as they take her away, a different set of ladies arrive and beat the ones from the Tang family. Chu Xiao recognizes one of them, Sister Nan, who tells her that the boss asked her to return to work overtime. Lai Yan is at Chu King's house. She and her subordinates search and scatter everywhere, but can't find any of his family members. She suspects Yi King Mei, Chen Xi's mom, had made the first move before her arrival, so she heads to her place. On meeting Yi King Mei, Lai Yan tells her to attack Chu King's family, or she will destroy hers, but King Mai responds that Chu Ting once saved her life. Chu Ting wakes Kao Wei the next day and takes her to his house. He sees his house and a mess and promises to repay all those who did this to him a hundredfold. They then head to the Yi family's residence. On getting there, Cheng Xi runs to hug Chu Ting as she is excited to see that he is fine. Chu Ting introduces Kao Wei to Cheng Xi and tells her to take care of her and not let anyone meet her or let her escape. He then asks about his parents, and Cheng Xi tells him that they are fine, but his sister is captured by Meng Zui's women. Surprised to hear this, he abuses his sister for not staying at his mom's company and rather visiting Meng's bar again. He tells her to keep his whereabouts a secret from everyone and pretend he is missing. She asks him about his sister. He tells her that Meng Zui will not hurt her and is just using her as bait. He asks about Chen Xi's family, and she tells him that they lost 30% of their forces to a fight against the Lai family, and that the berserk pills prevented them from losing more. She then mentions that her third aunt, Yi Mai, started an issue about it. Chu Ting knows that Yi Mai is doing this because she wants to be the head of the Yi family. Chu Ting shapeshifts and wears a mask. He tells Chen Xi to take him to her mom, while he pretends he is Mr. John, Chu King's master. Chen Xi takes him to her mom, and on their way, a little boy named Xiao Lir comes to meet them. He childishly asks for Chu King's masks, and Chen Xi promises to get him one. After the boy leaves, Chu Ting tells her he was sent to come and find out who he is. Cheng Xi is shocked and tells him that Xiao Lir's mother is close to Yimai. On meeting King Mi, Cheng Xi introduces him as Mr. Jun, Chu King's master, and she is surprised. She tells him to have his sit and asks him why he visited them. He tells her that the Lai family bullied his student, and he has come to support him. She then asks him why he came looking for the Yi family, and he brings out a pill saying it will benefit the Yi family. He tells her that the Tang family is in control because they can make medicine. He also tells her that since the Lai family has obtained the Tang family's recipe, they would seek to take them out of business and destroy them. He doesn't want the Lai family to take control, so he offers to set up a company that produces medicines while the Yi family pays for the raw materials. Yi Mai suddenly arrives. King Mei introduces Mr. Zhang as the foreign aide she invited. Chu King tells her he has gotten uncomfortable and wants to start going. She tells Cheng Xi to see him off, and Yi Mai also tells her daughter, Meyer, to see him off as he leaves. On their way, Meyer begins to ask many questions until Cheng Xi gets angry and tells her to shut up. Cho Lir appears with many candies. Chu Ting teases him and asks him for candies, but Cho Lir tells him he is not giving him. Meyer gets angry and pushes the little boy away. Chu Ting continues to tease him by asking him where he got the candies from, as he would also love to buy and Cho Lir replies that Meyer got them for him. She quickly tries to change the subject. Chu King gets angry and slaps her, telling her to mind her business. Cheng Xi and Chu Ting leave together in a car, and as they drive, Cheng Xi receives a message from her mom that she has accepted the offer, but on a condition. Cheng Xi's elder sister has to run the company. Chu Ting is surprised. He never knew Cheng Xi had a sister, as he has never seen her before since he visited Cheng Xi. Cheng Xi tells him that she has been away for two years, traveling the world. Her sister left home shortly after her newly married husband died in a car accident. Cheng Xi warns him not to think of hitting on her sister, and Chu Ting promises not to. They soon arrive at checkup point. Cheng Xi is surprised and wonders why military intelligence personnel wears traffic police uniforms. 
Chu Ching quickly makes himself invisible, using the invisibility technique before it reaches their turn. After passing the checkpoint, Chengxi is surprised and wonders where Chu Ting learned all the tricks. Soon, Chu Qing discovers they are being followed and tells Chengxi to drive slowly. Chengxi makes a turn and another car blocks them. Some women in purple robes come out of the car and start shooting at them. Chu Ting protects Chengxi in the car, knowing that he will quickly heal from the level 1 Wang Chuan bullet. But Chengxi could die if the bullets hit her. After a while, the women stop shooting, and thinking that the Wang Chuan bullets must have killed her, they try to leave. Chu Ting comes out of the car and tells them it is unprofessional to leave when their target has not died. They are surprised to see him and wonder how he got into the car. Chu Ting realizes that the military intelligence personnel had partnered with the women to kill Chengxi, since they were the only ones who thought she was the only one in the car. The women attempt to shoot him, and he dodges the bullets. He runs towards them, grabs them, and hits their heads against each other. Chengxi asks them why they want to kill her since the Jammu department messengers will not interfere in the Jimin City family battle. The women plead and tell Chengxi they are only following orders, and Chu Ting asks who ordered them. One of them threatens Chu Ting, and he snaps her neck. He moves to the second one, and she says she won't tell him anything since he will still kill her anyway. Chu King uses a mystical power and absorbs all her thoughts, killing her. They pack their bodies and blow them up along with the car. Chu Ting tells Chengxi that Huan Kaishin, the head of the military surveillance department, ordered them. Chengxi wonders if Huan Kaishin and the Lai family colluded together. Wang Kaishin is a man who cut his genitals so he could practice ancient martial arts and become strong. Chengxi is scared that Wang Kaishin might kill her, but Chu Ting tells her he has a way to solve it. He tells her that since Wang Kaishin wants to kill her and not the entire surveillance department, they could just change the main body of the military surveillance department and eradicate him. Chengxi thinks this is a crazy idea. Meanwhile, Chu Ting is badly injured, and he tells Chengxi to take her to Cao Wei so he can be treated. On getting to the Yi family's residence, Kao Wei sees him hurt and says he should have died instead. Chengxi gets angry and tries to hit her, but Chu King stops her and says they will work together in the future. He tells Chengxi to go and inform her mom about all that happened while Chao Wei attends to his wound. She first refuses but later accepts to treat him. He opens his wound and Kao Wei is shocked that the Wang Chuan poison did not spread. Chu Ting asks if she wants to learn and she says yes. He then tells her to treat him first, and that he will teach her later. After she is done, Chengxi returns to give the report of what her mom said. She tells Chu Ting that Meng Zui has stopped looking for him and has not caused any trouble for a while. She also tells him that the Lai family promises not to destroy the Yi family if only they hand him over to them. She finally says that her mom has finished building the company and has provided all the necessary equipment. She then says that she asked if he could really handle the military surveillance department and he tells her to hide for some time as the surveillance would soon start looking for her. They head to the new company the next day to check it out. Chu King writes a recipe for a drug, and when Kyo Wei checks it, she realizes it is poison. Chu Ting is impressed that she can tell it's poison only in one glance. He then thinks of how rich he would become when Kyo Wei finally turns all his recipes into varieties of valuable medicines. Chiao Wei produces the medicine, and Chu Ting drips his blood into it. He asks her to drink it telling her this would prevent her from running away and that she will face the consequence if she does. Chu King tells her the poison will erupt inside her if he dies. He gives her two more recipes and tells her to make them as fast as possible. He tells her that he will give her the antidote after one year of her working with him. He reasons that one year is enough to solve the problems in Jimin City. He wants to use the other two recipes to eliminate the Tang family's medicine. Chu Ting comes to tell him that the mayor Xing Lei is demanding that Mr. Jan visits her at the Xing family residence. He heads to Xing Li's house. Chengxi is worried that he didn't mask himself, but he tells her that Xing Li already knows he is Mr. John. He sees Xing Tao, his sister's boyfriend, and leaves Chengxi with him while he meets the mayor. On seeing Xing Lei, he asks her why she called for him, and she shows her a clip of Lai Yan involved in sexual activity with Wang Keishin. Chu Ting later asks her to use her power to save his sister from Meng Zui. She refuses and says he should settle his own business. Sing Lai tells him why she is against the Lai family and why she is with the Tang family. They continue to discuss the Tang and Yi family, comparing them with each other. Chu Ting asks for a pen and paper and writes something in it. He then gives it to Sing Lei to give it to Gong Yu. As he takes his leave, Sing Lei asks about his next move, but he doesn't tell her. 
She then tells him that if Meng Zui kills his sister, she will marry her son to Tang Xian, which taunts Chu Tang. He goes back to meet Chengxi and reasons that he needs to get rid of Wang Keishin to keep Chengxi safe. He would need some things to achieve that, so he tells Chengxi to follow him to Zhai Yu's place. Zhai Yu is very excited to see him, he thinks he has died. Chu Ting tells him he needs some finest jade and special spirit materials. Dai gets them for him, and Chu Ting sends him a lot of money. Chu Ting then shapeshifts into Mr. John and masks his face as he leaves with Chengxi. On their way back, Chengxi tells Chu Ting that if they can survive the crisis, she will marry him. Chu Ting smiles and replies that he will make her happy as Mrs. Chu for the rest of her life. He assures her that Guan Keishin will be dead in three days. They then head to the new company, Yi's Pharmaceutical. At the company, Chu King uses the jade stones he got to make fake dragon scales. Cheng Xi is shocked and tells him they could make merchandise of this and make a fortune from it. But Chu King says he is not in for trivial things like that. She asks what he wants to use them for, but he refuses to tell her. He continues to make more fake dragon scales, and after a while he meets Gao Wei. He asks for the cure for the Forgotten River Poison and offers to give her anything she wants except to let her go. She requests that he always has her back and gives an evil smirk. After some while, she finishes making the antidote. Chu Ting begins to feel like he is slowly being poisoned. Chiao Wei smashes the test tube containing the substance she just made, and a poisonous gas fills the air. She had tricked Chu Ting into thinking she was making an antidote for him. Chu Ting falls and loses consciousness. She injects herself with the substance and gets his blood sample to make an antidote to free herself from his grip. After making the antidote, she drinks it and becomes free. She takes him to the room and lays him on the bed, and while she tries to punch him, she gets attracted to him and kisses him. This makes it her first kiss. She then goes on to sleep with him in a bid to screw him. After a while, Xu Ting wakes up to see himself tied. He breaks the rope and discovers that Qiao Wei had slept with him. He stands up and tells her it was so nice of her. Suddenly, he starts to cough blood. He grabs her neck and asks her what she did to him. Chiao Wei tells him she did the same thing he did to her and says she doesn't have an antidote for it as it contains more than 20 varieties. Chu Ting asks her to state her terms. She tells him to let him go and never bother again. However, he threatens her to get in the antidote in three days and finish the work he gave her in the next three weeks. She tells him she is in charge and she suddenly coughs too. She then realizes she is not yet free and wonders how that is possible, even after taking the antidote. She tells him she will take him down and starts to punch herself, which makes him feel pain too. Chu King says there was a difference between the original blood he put in her poison and the one she took when making an antidote. After a while, Chu Ting receives a call from Chengxi telling him she is with Wabua at the front of the company. He masks himself as Mr. Jan, and they head to the Yunjing River. At the Yunjing River, while he prepares for what they came to do there, he suddenly coughs blood. Chengxi is shocked and asks what happened to him. He says it's nothing and wonders if something has happened to Qiao Wei again. After making the necessary preparations, he instructs Hua Hua to take some pictures when he tells her. He then throws the fake dragon scales he made up and performs some cultivation, producing the representation of a dragon. He tells Hua, Hua to take many pictures of it. On the way back, he tells them he has picked out two photos that must reach Huang Keishin the next day. He tells Hua, Hua that she will write a press release and put it out at his command. He tells Chengxi that they will go and see her mom later, as he wants to talk with her. After a while, they reach a checkpoint. Chu Ting notices that something is off, and he tells Chengxi to hide at the back. He winds down, and the officer demands that he puts off his mask. Chu Ting tells the officer he is a warrior and not under his control. He then tells him to tell them at the Ministry of Supervision that he knows Chengxi's whereabouts. The officer returns to report that a cultivator claims he knows Chengxi's whereabouts, and the women from the Jianwu department follow him immediately. The women discover it is Mr. John and attack him, but he defeats them easily. Suddenly, the Chengfeng army arrives, and Chengxi tells him to leave her and escape, but Chu King tells her not to worry. Wawa tells Chengxi that since Mr. John is Chu King's master, he find a way out. She does not know that Mr. John is Chu Ting. Zian's second aunt, Tang Ji, comes down from the military vehicle and introduces herself. Chu Ting realizes that the commander of the Jinmen Chengfang army is from the Tang family and reasons that Xing Lei has done a lot for the Tang family since the Chengfang army is under her control. 
Wan Keishin, the Minister of Supervision of Military Affairs, soon arrives and launches an attack on Chu Ting, but he blocks the attack. Chu Ting recognizes that Huang Keishin's energy is similar to the one he felt while healing Aunt Yi. He realizes that he was the one that hurt Aunt Yi. Wan Keishin is surprised that Chu King's energy matches his own, and also discovers that he was the one who saved King Mi. Aunt Yi and Tang Zian's mom arrive. Aunt Yi rebukes Mr. John for resisting the military headquarters and keeping the wanted criminals from them. She asks Wan Keishin what Cheng Xi's offense is and tells him to come to arrest her personally. Wan Keishin replies that he suspects that Cheng Xi and his military guards are dead. Mr. John says something that pisses Wan Keishin off, and they both attempt to attack themselves. Tang Zian's mum stops them and gets injured in the process. Tang Zian's mum asks Mr. John where Chu Ting is, but he answers them in parables, enters his car, and drives off. In the car, Chu Ting coughs in pain. The mark left on him when he healed on Yi still affects him, and it could detonate any time while fighting Guan Keishin. Meanwhile, Cheng Xi is sad that she is useless and cannot even protect her man. Chu Ting tells her that he is the one who ought to protect her. Huawa, who is also in the car, hears them and is surprised, prompting her to ask if he is not Chu Ping's master. Chu Ting becomes speechless. He knows he can't hide it anymore, so he reveals himself to her, and she becomes shocked. On returning home, disguised as Mr. Jan, he meets Aunt Yi and tells her he needs her help in killing Huang Keishin. Aunt Yi is shocked and reminds him that Huang Keishin is the minister of the supervision department and it is a rebellion just going to the military headquarters to kill him. Aunt Yi has a feeling that Mr. John is Chu Ting, but she doesn't mention it. Mr. John tells her that all she has to do is to help him the next day and asks her if the Yi family has any media outlets, to which Aunt Yi replies that the Yi family has several of them. The meeting ends and Chu Ting goes to see how Tuao Wei is doing. On getting to Kao Wei, he sees her cursing at him, holding some medicine in her hands. She becomes startled when he suddenly speaks. She didn't know he was behind her. He asks her about the medicine, and she complains that she has to work overtime and stay up late so it can be ready on time. He tells her he will reduce her workload if she can beg him. He extends the deadline for completing the medicine, and she gets excited. Chu Ting teases her, and she begins to rant, but Chu Ting kisses her, and she goes silent. He tells her not to mention it to anyone, and carries her to the room so she can sleep. On dropping her on her bed, she remembers kissing him while he was asleep the previous day. She starts to blush, but Chu Ting, feeling disgusted, leaves immediately. She then brings out her phone and goes through Chu Ting's pictures. She had taken several pictures of him while trying to make out that day. The next day, at the technology department, one of Wang Keishin's subordinates shows him pictures of a dragon in the lake that Chu Ting sent. He kills the lady because he doesn't want anyone else to know about the dragon, which he believes is full of treasures not knowing Chu King is trying to lure him so he can kill him. Meanwhile, Yi King Mai and Chu Ting are by the lake. Chu Ting, in this case, Mr. Jan, receives a call that Huang Keishin will soon arrive. Chu King uses his magical powers to create a vortex in the lake, and both he and Yi King Mai enter it to prevent Huang Keishin from seeing them when he arrives. After a while, Huang Keishin arrives and stands by the lake. He feels that he has found a treasure. However, Chu Ting and Yi King Mai come out of the lake, he sees them and attempts to shoot, but Yi King Mai kicks the gun out of his hands while Chu Ting stabs him with his sword. Wang Keishin falls into the lake dead. Mission accomplished, but suddenly, a real dragon appears out of the lake with Wang Keishin in its mouth. The dragon swallows Wang Keishin and dashes at them, attempting to attack them. They quickly evade its attack, but the dragon catches up with Yi King Mi and almost swallows her. Chu King saves her and lures the dragon away. The dragon begins to chase after Chu Ting as he flies off. Yi King Mai immediately calls Cheng Xi to tell Hua Bo'er to release the news of the Yunjing dragon. She tells Cheng Xi that there is a real dragon, and Cheng Xi is shocked. The news gets released, and on seeing it, Tang Zuan's mom quickly orders her people to head to Yunjing River immediately. Meng Xu also, seeing the news, finds it interesting. Meanwhile, the dragon is still chasing after Chu Ting in the river. Chu Ting wonders why there is a real dragon. He reasons that the river is the dragon's main habitat, so he jumps out of the water and hides in the forest. He suddenly remembers that he can stop the dragon using Dragon Seal. However, he didn't learn it well when training, but he tries it anyway, instead of just sitting still. As he starts to practice the Dragon Seal technique, the dragon suddenly dashes at him. 
He uses the dragon seal on the dragon and captures it. The dragon breaks loose and attempts to attack him again. He then uses the seal again and ties the dragon. He begins to think about the treasures of a dragon. The dragon's body parts are treasures, but the essential part is the innate dragon chi. The innate dragon chi is the most critical thing that makes a dragon become a real dragon. And if it is acquired, the cultivation base will advance exponentially. He considers Gong Yu and reasons that this innate dragon chi will save her. He summons stones and falls on the dragon. The dragon breaks loose again, and he uses the dragon seal the third time. He brings out his sword and slashes the dragon in the throat, causing it to release its innate dragon chi. However, Meng Zhu suddenly intercepts him and steals it. Chu King gets angry and attempts to attack her, but she resists him. He tells her to return it, and she recognizes that he is Chu Ting. Chu Ting removes his mask and negotiates with her that since she stole the dragon chi, she should release his sister. But she tells him that she got the dragon chi by her strength and without his help. Chu Ting becomes angrier and tries to attack her. But she warns him that she will kill him if he does anything nasty. She tries to unleash the power of the dragon chi she just absorbed but shockingly discovers that the dragon chi all poured into her lower abdomen and disappeared. She immediately leaves and Chu Ting wonders what happened. He goes back to check on the dragon, which is writhing in pain, and is now powerless due to losing its innate dragon chi. Chu Ting sees some people arrive, warning others about a dragon in the forest, and he wonders how they learned that there is a dragon. He goes to the Yi family's residence to meet Yi Qingming and discovers that she ordered the news release. He realizes that this was the reason Meng Zhu suddenly appeared. He then tells Yi Qingming that since the news that the dragon killed Wan Kaishan has spread and everyone is busy focusing on it, it would allow them to catch their breath. He heads home the next day to visit his parents, and they are surprised to see him. His mom calls him inside her room and asks him about his sister. She tells him to reveal everything that happened, as Chen Xi already told her everything. He is surprised how his mom got Chen Xi to open up, and she tells him that she called both Chen Xi and Wawa. Chu Ting realizes the ladies don't want to give a wrong impression to his mom, so they told her everything. He tells her everything, and he promises to save his sister. His mother warns him that he should not hide anything like this from her in the future. Otherwise, he shouldn't come home. He then reasons that his mom should also be a martial artist, since she is from the Chu family. His mom doesn't want to talk about it, but he tells his mom that aside from being a warrior, he is also a doctor. He scans through her body and discovers that her meridians are broken. He asks her who did it to her, but she tells him not to worry about it as she did it herself. He perceives that the Chu family forced her to and promises to destroy the Chu family. He then tells his mom that he could try to cure her, but she doubts that she can be fixed as there is no cure for this kind of injury. Chu Ting goes to Yi Pharmaceuticals to find a way to cure his mother and Gong Yu. Meanwhile, at the Xing family residence, Xing Wei and Xing lied, discuss the fake dragon scale stone they found in the forest, which Chu Ting planted to deceive people into thinking the dragon is not real. Xing Lai says she would have thought it was fake if she had not seen the dragon herself. Chu Ting cultivates for some days, steps into a new soul realm, and eliminates the poison Chiao Wei put in his body. Chengxi tells him he should go with her to pick up her sister, who has just arrived. While they wait for Chengxi's sister, Xiao Wu, Gan Yu's agent, arrives at the airport. Chu Ting had invited her to join Jinmen as the new head of the military supervision department since he killed Wang Kaishan. Chengxi's sister arrives, and Xiao Wu leaves to attend to other things. Chengxi introduces Chu Tsing as her boyfriend of her sister. Yi Wangqing, Chengxi's sister, soon starts to rebuke him, telling him not to cause trouble for the Yi family. They leave the airport, and on their way, Chengxi asks Chu Tsing if he can cure her sister and he replies casually, still pissed at what her sister said to him earlier. He later asks about the illness, and Yi Wanking starts to talk about it. She tells him she couldn't find out what her illness is since she was five years old. She fainted every time and her body became weaker until she was bedridden. They saw famous doctors, but none of them could treat her, and one of the doctors said that Yi Wanking would not survive 30 years. Yi Wanking is now 27 with three years left. However, Chu King still replies casually. At Yi Pharmaceuticals, Xu Ting is jealous that Chengxi has been running around for her sister and has not even looked at him. Chengxi brings Qiao Wei to test her sister so she can diagnose her illness. However, after testing her at the laboratory with high-tech equipment, all results show that there was no problem with her. 
Yuan King tells them that a doctor has helped her live for many years with the medicine she gave her. The doctor gave her 24 elixirs back then, of which she uses one per year, and it is expected to keep her alive for 24 years. Cho Wei takes one of the pills and asks to test it, but Chengxi is overly concerned as she overreacts and tells Cao Wei that one pill means one year for her sister. Chu Tsing too desires to test the medicine that is said to renew life. After a while, Chu King says he knows how the pill was made, and Chengxi tells him to make a hundred so her sister can live for a hundred more years. Chu Ting tells her it could only be done as the former doctor did. Chengxi starts to blame the previous doctor for not making enough. Chao Wei then asks Chu Tsing to spill the method he knows to save Yu Wonking. Chengxi and Wonking are surprised that he knows a way to save her but is hiding it. Chao Wei tells them that if a medicine could be developed with Chu King's prescriptions, it would be unique in the entire city, and the prescription is just a simplified version. She further says that if it is the full version, Wonking's illness won't be a problem. Chu Tsing reveals that he didn't say anything because it would take more than three years to refine the medicine. And since Wang King just has about three years left to live, he doesn't want to give her vain hope. He then takes his leave. Chao Wei thinks he doesn't want to save Wang King, but Chengxi defends him by saying she believes him and he is not the kind of person to do that. Later, Chu Ting tries to carve out a particular formation but finds it difficult. He is told that the president of V Pharmaceuticals wants him to come for a meeting. On getting to the meeting hall, he sees everyone already sitting, waiting for him. Others gossip about his attitude, but he doesn't care. He realizes that Wang King deliberately notified him late about the meeting. The meeting begins and Wang King, the president, talks about launching a new medicine the company had just developed. Chu Ting protests against it. Every other person agrees except Chu Ting. Chu Ting suggests that others should leave as he has some things to discuss with the president and the chief pharmacist, Zhao Wei. Chengxi wonders what he is doing. Wang King adjourns the meeting and Chu Ting questions Cao Wei about the medicine she made. She did not make it according to his prescription. She angrily yells out that something was wrong with the prescription, and she had to adjust and improve on it. Chu Ting mocks her supposed improved medicine. In anger, Cao Wei takes it from him and continues to rebuke him, saying he doesn't know how to make medicines. He shows her that he knows alchemy and can refine pills and taunts her with it. She leaves the hall in annoyance. Chu King leaves too. Chengxi says she believes Chu Ting and tells her sister to talk to him. Wang King goes to meet Chu Ting and apologizes, but he doesn't accept her apology. She sees him practicing ancient martial arts, and she is shocked. Chu Ting tells her he thought she was a cultivator, and she replies that she used to practice before when she was a child, but her doctor told her to stop if she wanted to live longer. He continues to act hostile, and Wang King asks if he is afraid of ruining his plans and leaving him empty and poor. However, Chu Ting tells her there are other families in Jinmen he can always partner with, and she shouldn't feel too important. On hearing this, she gets angry. The two continue to attack each other verbally until Wang King receives a call and steps out. He hears a noise from Wang King's office and checks what's happening. It's Yi Meyer protesting for participation in the company's shares, as she is part of the family too. But Wang King tells her that it is impossible since she and her mother did not contribute and vehemently opposed when the company was being established. Chengxi also hears the commotion and tries to intervene and support her sister, but Chu King stops her. Chengxi tells Chu King she is sad he is not on good terms with her sister. Meanwhile, still in the heated argument, Wang King slaps Yi Meyer. Yi Meyer gets vexed and attempts to hit her in return, but Chengxi quickly intercepts and grabs her hand. Yi Meyer brings out a dagger and runs toward Wang King. Chu King, who initially didn't want to intervene, sees this and quickly runs to hit her. He grabs her neck and threatens to throw her off the building. Yi Meyer begs him not to kill her, and he frees her. She leaves the office with the intention of coming back later for revenge. Wang King tells Chu Tsing that he finally did something that pleased her. He teases her that she is pleasing to the eye, and Chen Xi yells at him. Chu Ting leaves the office to attend to other things. After he leaves, Wang King tells Chen Xi that Chu Ting is very violent, and Chen Xi replies that she can't beat him. Yi Meyer goes back to her mother, asking her to avenge her, and her mother promises to. Cheng Xi runs to meet Chu Ting with the news that Mayor Ching Lai covered the truth about the real dragon. Meanwhile, Lai Nian is in her office, angry. She receives strange visitors. At Yi Pharmaceuticals, Chu Ting writes the prescription for some medicine, and Wang King grants it immediately, so the company's money goes into production. 
Chu Ting admires her decisiveness and affirms that she deserves the position of president. He suddenly receives a call from Jai Yu and goes to visit him. Jai Yu asks if the rumor about the dragon is real, and Chu Ting quickly covers his mouth, preventing him from talking about it. Chu Ting tells Jai Yu about the new pill that will be released into the market by Yi Pharmaceuticals. He says it would become famous quickly and surpass the Lai and Tang families. He then tells him to help him spread the news. He heads back to the Yi family's residence and meets Cao Wei, who tells him the new pill will be available the next day or in two days. After she leaves, Shengxi and her sister come to report that Yi Qingmai is in danger as she was tricked into a trap and was captured along with the new pill by the Lai family. She tells him that the Lai family is full of martial masters, and they want to destroy the Yi family. Chu Ting asks for her location, and Chengxi tells him to follow her as he will take the lead. He tells her that he will go alone, but Chengxi refuses and says she wants to go too. Chu Ting knocks her out and leaves her in Wanking's care. He gets the address from her and quickly heads there. On his way, he reasons that saving Yi Qingmei and the pills will be difficult if he goes alone, so he calls Meng Sui for help. He promises to do whatever she wants to get her to help him. She then asks for his sword and mask, and he promises to give them to her. She stands up and prepares to go help him, but remembers her belly and says she can't go. Chu Ting is pissed that he has to beg her before she can help, even though he has always treated her so well. He reasons that he has to find Xiao Wu if things continue this way. He gets to Yunshan Mountain and intercepts the fight between the Lai family and He King Mei, disguising himself as Mr. Jian. Lai Gan tells Mr. John to help him kill King Mei and offers to give him all that the Yi family promised him, and if he doesn't want to, he should just stay out of the fight, and she will give him a huge amount of money. He refuses and says he cannot let go since they attacked his disciple. The Lai family soon launches an attack, and Chu Ting counterattacks with his sword using the Thousand Flower Single Slash technique. However, the move is just for a show and can't deal much physical damage. He uses it to buy time until Xiao Wu arrives to help them. He suddenly sees an older man named Wu Dunren, the master of the Suanshan Hall. He perceives he is a real cultivator with a high cultivation level. This feels like he is meeting an acquaintance in a land of strangers. One of the Lai family members, Zhang Sudong, attempts to attack King Mai from behind, but Chu King saves her and takes the hit instead. The guy discovers Wang Keishan's mark is on him and realizes he killed him. The Lai family attacks Chu Ting and Zhang Zudong attacks King Mai, leaving a poison mark on her body just as she had much earlier before Chu King healed her. Chu Ting reasons that he can't escape with the Yi family and wonders why Xiao Wu has not yet come. He absorbs the poison from King Mai's body and gets weaker. Lai Yan attempts to use this opportunity to attack, but Wu Dunren stops her. He tells Chu Ting that the Suanshan Hall needs a sorcerer and asks if he will be willing to take the position. A few moments later, after the Lai family has agreed to kill King Mei and leave Chu Ting, Dunrin tells Chu Ting that he will only lock his veins. Chu Ting refuses to allow him, and they soon begin to combat. Chu Ting, realizing that he can't defeat the old man as he is disadvantaged and King Mai is in danger, thinks of how they can escape. Suddenly, Chou Wu arrives with a gun. They are all surprised to see her except for Chu King, who called for her, of course. Lai Dian is surprised she came to save the Yi family and tells her the supervision department is not to interfere in the war between families. Lai Dian attempts to attack King Mai, but Xiao Wu points the gun at her. Wang Keishan's master tells Lai Nian that she should not worry too much as King Mai has already been poisoned and will definitely die. She replies that he said the same thing the last time too, but she is still alive. Fearing Xiao Wu, the Lai family leaves. Xiao Wu tells Chu Tsing that he owes him a favor and leaves. Yi Meier and her mother arrive and pretend to care about King Mei. Meanwhile, Yi Meier's mother is angry that Lai Yan could not kill her sister even with the opportunity she gave her. She brings out a poison needle and attempts to kill her by herself instead. King Mei suddenly says that there is an imposter among them. This makes Yi Mei stop what she is about to do and quickly hide the needle. Yi Mei responds by saying she will find out who the imposter is and make them pay for it. Xu Ting catches her off guard by replying that she should go ahead to kill herself then. She continues to pretend, and Xu Ting attempts to attack her. But King Mai stops him and instructs Yi Mai on what to do when she returns home. After she leaves, Xu Ting asks why she stopped him even though she knows she is the imposter, and she replies that it is not yet time for her to pay for what she has done. Chengxi and Wang Qing arrive and are glad to see their mother still fine. 
Chengxi is mad and refuses to talk to Chu Ting. On returning to Yi Pharmaceuticals, Chu Ting and King Mai step aside to discuss. Chu Ting finds out that the poison running in King Mai has been triggered, and he can't cure it. He tells her she just has at most one month left to live. She asks him how many days it would take for the poison to erode her inner strength, and he tells her she has just three days. She entrusts Chengxi into his care, and tells him to watch after Wang Qing too, even though she has caused him a lot of trouble. She reveals that she became insecure when she found out that their father was a spy from the Li family who was instrumental in getting King Mai poisoned while she was pregnant with her, which caused her to be born with an incurable sickness. He got depressed and later killed himself. King Mai further tells him that the hatred between the Li and Yi families cannot be resolved, so he should not be deceived if the Li family ever talks about making peace in the future. This prompts Chu Tsing to ask why she didn't kill Yi Mai when she betrayed the Yi family. King Mai tells him that Yi Mai was the original heir of the family, but when her mother died, she was appointed the next heir instead, and Yi Mai has held a grudge against her since then. Chu Ting is surprised. Cao Wei comes out of the operating room and reports that Ching Xu, who got injured during the Lai family's attack, will remain unconscious for some days, but her life is no more in danger. Wang Qing tells Cao Wei to take a look at her mom, and after a test, she discovers that something is wrong with her. But as she tries to talk, Chu King stops her and tells her to keep King Mai's condition a secret. Wang Qing notices both of them and asks what the problem is, but Kiao Wei tells her that King Mai is in perfect condition. King Mai leaves to attend to other things, and Wang Qing takes Chen Xi to a separate room. Meanwhile, Kiao Wei asks what Chu Ting is up to, wondering if he plans to steal the Yi family's properties since King Mai won't live up to a month. Wang Qing asks Chen Xi if she noticed anything weird about Chu King and her mom but Chengxi doesn't see a problem with it. Chengxi heads back to her office, and on her way, she sees Xu Ting but just walks past him. Chu Ting grabs her hand, but she still acts angry. He apologizes for knocking her out, and he kisses her when she refuses to accept. She tells him never to leave her out of anything again, even if it is dangerous. He tells her he can't do that, and she is angry with him. As she leaves, Chu Ting tells her to go home and accompany her mom if she is free. She then remembers what Wang Qing told her and considers what Chu Ting just said. She wonders if something is really wrong with her mom. She becomes determined to find out. Chu Ting reasons that he can only hide their mom's illness for a short time and hopes that they forgive him when they eventually find out. He checks the poison mark on his body and reasons that his life could also be in danger if triggered, so he seeks to get rid of Zhang Sudong. Chengxi goes to meet her mom and asks if she can help with anything but her mom tells her to visit the victim's homes from last night's incident on her behalf. After a while, King Mai calls Chu Ting to her office and tells him she is giving her one of the Yi family's mansions as compensation for his contribution to the family. She tells him to pick up his family as the Yi family is no longer safe. Chu Ting asks if she is going to the Lai family and says he will accompany her. She refuses, but Chu Ting insists, saying he could at least retrieve her body if she dies. What a ridiculous thing to say. She tells him she will be going the next day, and Chu Ting tells her he will go find some aid. He tells her to wait for him to return, but as he leaves, he feels she will leave without saying goodbye. Chu King heads to the Ji Jin bar to meet Meng Zui. He enters the bar and sees his sister. He runs to meet her and asks how she is. Meng Zui appears and tries to cause strife between them, accusing Chu Ting of not coming to save his sister, but Chu Chiu does not fall for it. Meng Zui tells them to sit and talk. She serves herself and him a drink, but Chu Ting refuses to drink, being skeptical it could be poisoned. Meng Zhu drinks from her glass and gives it to him instead. He finishes the drink and asks her about her conditions for releasing his sister. She tells him to be her slave, but he refuses and asks her to change her conditions. Meng Zhu calls Chu Xiao to make some drinks for them, and while Chu Ting is still skeptical about the drink, his sisters tell him it is not poisonous. He takes the drink and discovers it was actually poisoned. Chu Xiao is confused and takes the drink, but she isn't affected. Meng Zhu tells her that the poison only works on cultivators, of which only Chu Ting is among the three of them. She orders her men to throw Chu Xiao out of the bar as she has already gotten the person she needs. Knowing that she can't save her brother alone, Chu Xiao decides to go call for help. Chu Ting wakes up tied to a chair. He finds it difficult to use his cultivation powers, and Meng Zhu tells him that he can't escape as the chair was specially made for him. She tells him all he has is now hers and draws closer to threaten him with a knife. Chu Ting activates his powers, then a beam of light comes out of his mouth and hits one of Meng Zui's eyes. 
He tells her to look into his eyes, and she sees one of his eyes glowing. Her eye starts to glow too, and she asks him what it is. He tells her it's the live binding spell. Once someone is cursed with this spell, the spellcaster and the victim's lives will be bound together, and when one dies, the other will die along with them. Chu Qing's bind gets loose, and Meng Zui attempts to stab him. Chu Qing grabs her hand and asks why she hates him so much, even to want to sacrifice her life in a bid to kill him. She frees her hand from his grip and attempts to attack him again, but she slips and falls. Chu Ting asks what is wrong and says she hasn't progressed, even though she swallowed the innate dragon chi. She gets pissed. She tells him she has released his sister and says he should leave too. He tries to settle things with her, but she disagrees with him. He then tells her he needs her help with visiting the Lid family the next day. She refuses, but he tells her she won't be alive if he dies. He also tells her King Mai is dying, so she plans to visit the Lai family. He says Meng Zui will know why King Mai wants to go there, but he doesn't know, which is why he came to find her. He offers to give half of his new mansion if she helps him, otherwise she will die too if he dies and he leaves. Meng Zui is angry as she now has no choice but to help him. Meanwhile returns with Xing Wei and some other women from the Xing family to come and rescue his brother. But Xu Ting misses them, and as he heads out, one of the women from the Xing family is shocked to see him. She tells him that his sister spent the whole night letting the mayor Xing Lai to help her brother before she finally decided to help. Xing Wei and Xu Xiao, now with Meng Zui, ask her where Xu Ting is, and she refuses to answer. Xing Wei gets angry, and they begin to fight. Xu Ting goes there and meets the two fighting themselves. He thanks his sister for helping him. Meng Zui defeats Xing Wei. And when Xing Wei sees that Chu Qing is fine, she gets angry and attempts to attack Chu Xiao for tricking the Xing family. Chu Qing stops her and punches her hard, throwing her off. She asks him what he is doing as he is the reason she came. Chu Ting tells her he knows she reluctantly came to rescue him because Xing Lai ordered, that because she was willing, and tells her to go back. She leaves in anger. Chu Qing takes her already exhausted sister and prepares to leave too, but Meng Zui tells him to wait and says she will help him as he requested but on the condition that he will remove the life-binding spell. However, Chu Ting tells her he doesn't know how to remove the spell and is also anxious that he has put his life in her hands. He asks her to change her condition. She tells him she has a doctor who can check her sister, and while Chu Xiao is being checked, Chu Ting asks if she has come up with a new condition and tells him that he should marry her. He is shocked and thinks she is crazy, but she tells him he has to agree to marry her if he wants her help. He agrees but tells her that his name will be in the first position. She first rejects but finally agrees, and they head to the court immediately to get married. Chu King is surprised that he has really gotten married. After that, Chu King says they should head back to the Yi family, and they will visit his parents together later to move to the new mansion King Mei gave her. Meng Zi tells him that since the Yi family is now unsafe and the Xing family is along the same street as his new mansion, he should bring his family to her place instead. Chu Ting wonders if she is up to anything bad, and she tells him that she can't do anything bad since they are now married. She requests to see his sword, and he shows it to her. They head to the Yi family, and Meng Zui tells him he is not allowed to flirt with any other women since they are now married and says if he does, she will flirt with other men too, as many women as he also flirts with. Getting to the Yi family's residence, Chu Ting alights from the car, and as he leaves, Meng Zui tells him that she is pregnant. Chu Ting is shocked and asks if he is the father, and she tells him that she has slept with too many men to know who the father is but decided to choose him as the father. Chu Ting asks her what if he tells her to abort it, and she tells him she won't. She drives off, and Chu Ting is pissed by how she keeps playing him around. Cheng Xi comes to meet him. She tells him that her mom went somewhere and feels bad about it. Chu Ting tells her not to worry and tricks her into getting something for him at the company while he heads to the Lai family's residence. He sees Lai Huanzhi entering her car at the Lai family mansion and thinks she should know King Wei's whereabouts. The car leaves and he follows her. After a while, Lin Huanzhi discovers she is being followed and speeds up. Chu King speeds up too and hits her car from behind, causing the car to somersault and crash into a nearby bush. She comes out of the vehicle and Chu Ting grabs her neck. She tells him that if he kills her, someone will also be sent to kill Chengxi. Chu Ting notices a resemblance between her and Chengxi and wonders if they are sisters, since Chengxi's father was a spy from the Lai family. He asks if she has met King Mai, and she replies that she doesn't know what King Mai is up to but only knows that King Mai sent Lai Yan a letter, and Lai Yan immediately left for Fuan. 
He leaves her and prepares to take his leave. Lai Huanzhi brings out a gun and shoots at him, but he uses his power to block the bullet, and it bounces back to hit her. However, she blocks it too. Chu Ting returns to his car and heads for Fuan. Suspecting that Lai Dian will not be alone, he calls Kiao Wei to help her give Xiao Wu something. He misses Meng Zui and leaves her a message that he has gone to Fuan. At Fu Han, he hides in the forest, waiting to see if King Mai has been exposed. Suddenly, his phone rings. Someone shoots in his direction immediately, but he manages to dodge it. He reasons that the Lai family must have thought it was King Mai. Zhang Xudong runs toward the direction he heard the sound thinking it is King Mai. However, King Mai attacks him unexpectedly and goes back into hiding. Zhang Xudong meets the other Lai family members and tells them that King Mai has someone helping her. Lai Yan tells them never to shoot until they confirm it is King Mai. Chu King decides to help King Mai again, but nobody shoots. King Mai decides to use herself as the bait and runs out of hiding. One of the Lai family members sees her, but Chu King kills her before she could do anything. Chu Ting is disappointed it wasn't Zhang Sudong. Suddenly, Wu Dunren launches an attack from behind, but Chu King dodges it. Wu Dunren tells him he let him live this time, unlike the last time, and just as he prepares to attack him, Xiao Wu arrives. Chu Ting attempts to go help King Mai but gets blocked by Zhang Sudong, who gets in with his poisonous qi, causing Chu King to become weak. He prepares to attack Chu Ting again. But Meng Zui shoots at him with her powerful gun. Wu Dunren leaves, saying he cannot interfere in the matter anymore. Meng Zui continues to shoot at them, and the Lai family calls a retreat. Not satisfied that she hasn't killed King Bai, Lai Yan dashes toward her, but her subordinate tells her to escape instead while she fights with King Mai. However, King Mai deals damage to her immediately and pursues after Lai Yan. She asks if she still remembers Lai Yuan Bai and Lai Yan stops immediately to confront her. Lai Yan tells her she is not worthy of mentioning the name. They soon begin to fight. Chu Ting watches them while they fight, and one of the Lai family members suddenly hits him from behind, causing him to fall to the ground. She tries to attack him, but Xiao Wu shoots her, and she flees. Lai Yan and King Mai continue fighting. They bring out a knife and dash at each other. King Mai slices Lai Yan's throat while Lai Yan stabs her in the chest. Chu Ting quickly runs to meet King Mai. Before dying, King Mai gives him the two knives and tells him to throw them away into the Yun River. Chu Ting reasons that the knives are the only thing related to Chengxi's dad and also the clue to the deep hatred between the Li and Yi families. He considers keeping them, but decides to throw them away as he was instructed. Menzu comes running to Chu Ting, asking him to save her from the dragon chasing her because of its innate dragon chi with her. Chu Ting immediately uses the dragon seal to bind the dragon. Xiao Wu is surprised to see the dragon and comes closer to it. The dragon attempts to attack her, but she points her gun at it in self-defense and shoots the dragon just before Chu Ting could stop her. The shot breaks the dragon seal, and it attempts to attack her again. Chu Ting tries to use the dragon seal again but can't, as he is now very weak and cannot use his power. However, the dragon becomes terrified and runs away. It heads where King Mai's body is and just before they could stop it from taking her body, the dragon takes it and enters the river. Xiao Wu is shocked that there is a real dragon as opposed to what Xing Lai said. Meng Zui points her gun at her, and she swears not to reveal the information to the public. Chu Ting explains that he doesn't want Jinmen to have another chaos because of the dragon, so he hid the information. He gives her two choices, to either wait until the perfect time to spread the news or he should take her to capture the dragon when he has time and she will become the owner. She picks the second option and asks him when the perfect time is. He replies that it is the day the Lai family gets destroyed. After a while, Chu Ting gives Xiao Wu a formation to give to Gong Yu to cure her illness. The formation helps the user with their training in martial arts. He had made four of this particular formation and gave one to his mum and Shangxi. Chu Ting tells her to advise Gong Yu not to force herself into training anymore. But Xiao Wu replies that there is a reason Gong Yu forces herself to train that much and leaves. Well, Chu King doesn't understand what she means. Meng Zhu gets jealous and asks him who Gong Yu is, and he slyly tells her that she is his fiance. She kicks him, and he falls to the ground. He asks her to help him get up, as he is weak. He explains to her that it's the side effect of Zhang Sudong's poison, which King Mai had no cure for, causing her to go find Lai Yan. Chu Ting brings up the talk about Meng Zui's pregnancy. He thinks she was joking just to provoke him. 
He scans her body and finds out that she is really pregnant. Getting back to Meng Zui's place, Chu Qing takes some rest. Chu Xiao suddenly arrives and sees her brother lying down unconscious. She becomes scared that Meng Zui killed him, but later discovers he is fine. Meng Zui tells her they are now married and shows her the marriage certificates, which she talks her. She asks Meng Zui questions about it, but she doesn't reply. She then tells her to go and bring her parents to her place as the Yi family is no longer safe. After Chu Chao leaves, Meng Zhu wonders about the chaos the city will turn into when the news about King Mai and Lin Yan's deaths spreads. The news spreads, and the Yi family discovers that it is true. Chexi feels bad that Chu King knew about her mom's condition and refused to tell her about it. Yi Mai and her daughter arrive, and pretending to care, Yi Mai tells them that she will get revenge for King Mai. Yi Wanking, knowing she is deceitful, tells her not to worry as she and Chengxi will avenge their mom alone. Yi Mai and her daughter leave, hoping that they will kill Mr. John next so the Yi family can become theirs fully. Tang Zian's mother also sees the news and tells one of her subordinates to learn more about the situation. The Lai family also desires to seek revenge for Lai Yan. Chu Ting suddenly wakes up and is surprised to see his parents beside him. He wonders why they are in Meng Zui's house, and Chu Xiao tells him that Meng Zui instructed her to bring them since the Yi family is no longer safe. Chu Ting discovers that he slept for two days and wonders how chaotic the city must have become. He quickly dresses up and heads to Yi Pharmaceuticals. Yi Wanking asks why he didn't tell them their mom was injured. He suggests it was her mom's idea, and Wanking thinks he must have known how to cure her but refused to. Chengxi doesn't say anything, she stares at him, looking depressed. Feeling lazy to start explaining everything to them, he just tells them he is also in deep grief for King Mai's death, and there is nothing he will gain from her death that would have caused him not to cure her if he could. Out of pain, Chengxi refuses to agree with the fact that her mom has died. She believes that she is only trapped somewhere. Walking then asks him why he has come to them, and he replies that King Mai's last wish was to let Chengxi become the patriarch of the Yi family. Wanking says this was what he wanted, so he could marry Chengxi after she became the patriarch, so he would automatically become the master of the Yi family. Xu Ting agrees, and Wanking sends him out. As he leaves, she asks about their mom's dead body, and Xu Ting tells her that the Jade Dragon swallowed it in the Yunjing River. Wanking becomes angry and attempts to grab him, but she breaks down in tears. Yet, Chengxi doesn't say a thing to Xu Ting. Xu Ting leaves and bumps into Cao Wei. He asks her about the pill she is making threatening to blame her if anything goes wrong. He leaves and reasons that he needs to refine some nurturing pills for the poison in his body. After refining, he heads to Meng Zui's place with his last jade stone. On seeing her, Chu King decides to use his powers to detect whether the baby is his, but Meng Zui avoids it. Chu Ting begins coughing blood from using his powers, as he has yet to recover from the poison. Chu Ting gives her the jade he brought and takes his leave. He has no choice, he has to protect the baby but he seeks to find the true father and kill him. Meng Zhu wonders what the jade is for and drops it, assuming it won't benefit the baby. She lies on her bed and tries to sleep but can't. She is disturbed by thinking about the jade. So she decides to try absorbing it, but she feels some pain and quickly drops the jade. However, she realizes that the baby is fine and discovers that the jade contains pure inner power, so she starts cultivating with it. She thinks about Chu Ting and reveals that the baby is actually his, and she has just been trying to provoke him. That night, Zhu Bu Ken and his other friends meet Chu Ting. They tell him that they have been concentrating on cultivating and have progressed massively. They ask him when he will return to school as Tang Zian has been throwing tantrums around since he has been absent. Chu Ting asks them what they plan to do after graduation, and they tell him they might enroll in university and get on with their lives. Chu Ting asks them if they have ever considered dropping out and doing what they want. Zhu Bu Ken replies that they really love to deal with the society and asks him if he can help them speak with Tang Zian so they can be accepted in the Tang family. Chu Ting tells them he can put them in Cushing Menchu, and they are shocked. He tells them he wants them to join Cushing Menchu and work in the management department. Zhu Bu Ken asks him if he is working for Cushing Menchu, and he shocks them when he tells them he is married to Meng Zui. They ask him what he wants them to do, and he tells them to find every man connected to Meng Zui. They all report to Cushing Menchu Company the next day, ready to resume work. Chu Ting is surprised that they really did quit school. He introduces Chuxin, Meng Zui's assistant, to them as the one in charge of them. Chuxin reports to Meng Zui that Chu Ting brought his classmates, 
and Meng Zhi wonders if Chu Qing gave her the Jade Stone in exchange for getting his guys to her company. At night, Chu Qing meets Cheng Xi in a park. Chen Ti tells him she doesn't know why Chu Qing treated her so well, even though he doesn't want the Yi family's legacy. Chu Qing tells her it's because she is easy to persuade and tells her he will stay by her till the Yi family rises to become the strongest family in the city with her as the patriarch. Cheng Xi asks him if her mother told him anything before she died, and he answers that her mother said he should take care of her and her sister. He adds that Wanking is proving too troublesome. Cheng Xi asks him how he will care for her and tells him to help her become the patriarch. Cheng Xi tells him that Yi Mai already has most of the Yi family in her hand, with just a few left on her own side. She tells him that she and Yi Mai will fight for the position the next day in front of everyone, including the Lai and Tang families, who would be there to mess things up so they can gain an advantage for themselves. She says she must not fail as the name of the Yi family won't last if that happens. Chu Ting tells her to leave it to him, assuring her she will become the patriarch. After a while, Cheng Xi receives a call that her sister is in danger, and Chu Ting asks her if her sister has died. Cheng Xi gets pissed at this question and bites him. She asks if he wants her to die. They soon get into the car and head to where Cheng Xi's sister is. On the way, they notice two cars following them, and not long after, one crosses them. Yi Mai comes out of the car and is surprised to see Chu Ting with Cheng Xi. She thought Chu King had betrayed the two sisters. She reasons that if she kills Cheng Xi now, she will become the patriarch, but she dies, considering that Chu King is with her, the game will be over. She can't risk her life on this, so she turns around and leaves immediately. Chu Ting and Cheng Xi arrive at Yi Pharmaceuticals and meet Wang King with Cheng Xu in a ward. Wang King's leg is broken, but she is fine. Wang King sees Chu Ting and asks him why he is here, since he already has Meng Zui with him now. However, Jing Xu tells Chen Xi to take her sister out, as she wants some moments alone with Chu Ting. Jing Xu tells him that even though Wang King doesn't like him, she believes him because King Mei chose to believe him. She then asks him what he plans to do in the next family meeting. He tells her it depends on the situation, but one thing is definite. Cheng Xi will become the patriarch. Chu Ting then asks if Wang King and Cheng Xi have the same father, which shocks Jing Xu, wondering if King Mei told him anything. Chu Ting tells her that King Mai told him a brief story, but some parts are vague. Jing Xu tells him that King Mai only gave birth to three daughters and that Yi Mao is an adopted son. Chu Ting is shocked and asks about the third daughter, saying the daggers he threw into the Yunjiang River had some name inscriptions, He and Huang. Jing Xu, unwilling to talk about it, tells him to leave. Chu Ting prepares to take his leave. He wonders what really happened between the Alai and the Yi families. Wang King tells Cheng Xi that Chu Ting is only trying to take advantage of her and will dump her when he reaches his aim. She also mentions that he has been living at Quixing Mengshu and even brought his parents there, suggesting that he is the kind of man yearning for prosperity only. Cheng Xi tries to defend him, but Wang King doesn't listen to her. Chu King gets to Quixing Mengshu and gets blown away by Meng Zui's beauty. She teases him and he becomes shy. She then asks him why he has come to see her and he requests that she accompany him to the Yi family the next day. She denies it and says she wants to go back to bed. However, Chu King blocks her and asks if the baby in her womb absorbed the heavenly dragon aura. He wonders how the dragon would feel if it realized it lost the aura to a mere kid. Meng Zui, now getting scared, tells him she will go with him to the Yi family's meeting. Chu King tells her he is not trying to scare her, but is only telling her the truth as the heavenly dragon would have certain effects on any absorber, let alone a baby. Meng Zhu becomes more scared and asks how it could affect the baby. He replies that the baby could be disabled or die in the womb. Hearing this, she begins to cry and asks him what she can do about it. He assures her that he will care for the baby no matter what happens and leaves. She is determined to protect the baby with her life, unlike her mother, who neglected her when she was little. In Chu King's room, he is concerned about the poison in his body which hinders him from using his power. However, he takes his mind off it and says it is nothing, as he has already lived two lives, and it is just death he will face. The next day, he sees Meng Zui's car and attempts to break the side glass so he can enter and drive it away for his mission. But Meng Zui appears and shows him the key instead. She has decided to go with him. She feels this is a perfect chance to enhance Quixing Meng Zui's force, and she tells him that if she encounters some wolves along the way, he has to help her. They drive off on their way. Chu Ting tells her that there's a creature that can assist the heavenly dragon aura. He says the creature usually stays next to the baby dragon to help it nurture the aura, 
which, without it, the baby dragon can never withstand the aura. They need to find it if the baby in Meng Zui's womb must be fine. However, the baby's soul will still have a dragon part to it. Meng Zui is surprised and says she will go and find the creature when they return, but Chu King says the creature is not near the jade dragon, and he is the only one that can find it. After a while, they arrive at the Yi family mansion and head inside. On seeing Chu Ting, Cheng Xi attempts to greet him, but Wang King stops her. Tang Rong, the patriarch of the Tang family, asks Meng Zui why she is present. She reasons that she has come to destroy all that she has labored for. Meng Zui mocks her and the Tang family. She then says she just came to watch the fun between the families and tells her not to worry. Being careful not to offend her, Tang Rong leaves her in protest that Chu Ting is not supposed to be allowed into the Yi family's assembly hall. The others agree, but Cheng Xi explains that Chu King is her fiance and should be allowed to attend the meeting. Tang Rong still supports her point and says men are never usually allowed in such meetings. She also points out that Chu King doesn't act like husbands, should but rather lingers with women around. Chu Ting asks her if he said he wanted to enter and insults her that she is jumping up and down like a monkey. Tang Rong gets angry and attempts to attack him, but Meng Zui fires a shot from her gun. Yi Mai stops them from fighting and says everyone should sit inside. However, Xu Ting refuses to join as his presence is not welcome. The meeting on who to become the next head of the Yi family begins. Chu wonders why Yi Mai -er and the supreme realm martial artist in the Tang family didn't show up on such an important day. He reasons that Yi Mai and Tang Rong have some moves up their sleeves. Yi Mai announces the commencement of the voting, but Tang Rong interrupts and asks what conditions the competitors must fulfill to qualify to become the head of the family. Yi Mai tells her that the person must be a member of the Yi family, have the blood of the ancestors, and must have made significant contributions to the family. After hearing this, Tang Rong nominates the fourth elder Yi Tao, and Yi Tao gladly accepts. Yi Mai feels betrayed as Yi Tao had sworn to vote for her the previous night. Chu begins to clap, and Yi Mai wonders why. He tells them that Tang Rong did something amazing by nominating Yi Tao. He tells Yi Tao he is curious about what agreements she and Tang Rong have reached or how much she sold herself for. Yi Tao angrily insults him, and Meng Zui points her gun at her. Tang Rong states that Meng Zui has come to the meeting only to cause trouble. Meng Zui points the gun up and pulls the trigger, blasting the roof. Chaos almost starts, but Chu Ting interrupts and suggests they should all vote on Tang Rong's nomination first. The votes tie at 2-2. Two two. Now, Chu Ting is expecting Tang Rong to show her card. Tang Rong signals to the seventh elder of the Yi family, and she also votes in favor of Yi Tao, making Yi Tao ahead. Yi Mai gets angrier that the seventh elder also betrayed her. Chu Ting secretly tells Meng Zhu that she should lend Yi Mai her gun. Yi Mai takes the gun and kills Yi Tao immediately. Meng Zhu then snatches her gun from Yi Mai, pretending not to be involved. Tang Rong gets angry and tries to attack Yi Mai, but the Yi family defends her. Tang Rong asks for evidence to prove that Yi Tao sold herself, and Wang Qing brings out a flash drive. She connects it to a computer, and some pictures are displayed of Yi Tao meeting Tang Rong at a tea house two days earlier. Tang Rong denies that there was anything, and Wang Qing tells her that she has a recording too. Tang Rong gets scared and takes her leave to avoid being exposed. As she leaves, Chu Ting asks her if she still remembers Lai Yue, but she doesn't respond. On getting outside, she is pissed that Wang Qing screwed up her plans. She remembers Chu King's question and tells her subordinate to gather others to head to the Lai family. Yu Mai says they should continue with the voting, but before that, she mentions that someone tried to assassinate her daughter the night before, and she was severely injured. She accuses Cheng Xi as the culprit, but no one says anything. Yu Mai feels awkward at the silence and says she wanted to find Cheng Xi immediately, but Meyer didn't let her. So she brought Meyer to the meeting to ask Cheng Xi in person to avoid misunderstanding. Some people bring Meyer in on a stretcher, and as they walk, Chu Ting places his foot in one of them's paths so that she trips and falls. Chu Ting then takes a gun and shoots at Meyer, but she quickly jumps and dodges the bullet. Seeing this, he starts to mock her. She leaves in shame. The voting begins, and they start to vote for their respective persons, Yi Mai or Cheng Xi. The seventh elder, Yi Xing, votes for Yi Mai, however Yi Yu, the sixth elder, protests against it, saying she shouldn't be allowed to vote since she sold herself to the Tang family. As Yi Yu speaks, Yi Mai shoots at the wall close to her, threatening her. Yi Mai announces herself as the new head of the Yi family and then signals to the Lei family to attack. 
Yi Mai unleashes her power and launches an attack on Chengxian waning. Chu Ching quickly swallows some pills and becomes very powerful. A martial master tries to block him, but Chu Ting punches him and summons his sword. He dashes at Yiling, the fifth elder, and kills her. He then turns to attack Yi Mai, but Lai Huanzhou blocks him, hitting each other with enormous power. Chu Ting feels pain and wonders when she practiced this kind of poisonous skill. He reasons that her poison power is stronger than Zhang Sudong's. Yi Mai criticizes him for killing Yi Ling and demands an explanation. She even calls Cheng Xi's attention to it, but Cheng Xi declares that he hasn't done anything wrong. Wang Qing brings out a file stating that Yi Ling has committed many crimes and used her position to gain personal benefits, making her guilty and worthy of death. Yi Mai says that even if Yi Ling was guilty, it wasn't in Chu King's right to kill her, as it was against the rule of the Yi family. Chu Ting asks her who gave her the authority to convict him, and she answers that she has the authority since she is now the head of the family. Chu Ting laughs and says since she agreed that Yi Ling was worthy of death, it means her vote should also be annulled. Thus, she isn't yet the patriarch. Yi Mei gets angry and becomes determined to kill Chu Ting. They all prepare to attack him, but he tells them he has another backup besides Meng Zui. However, Lai Yuan, an elder of the Lai family, reveals that Chu Ting is already poisoned by Zhang Sudong's poisonous palm and tells him to quit trying to act strong. Chu Ting is shocked. He didn't know someone else knew he was poisoned. He also reminds the Lai family that Tang Rong has left and must have headed to destroy the Li family. Lai Huanzhou gets angry, but Meng Zui blasts her gun toward her before she can try to attack Chu Ting. Lai Huanzhou suggests they return home, but Yi Mai disagrees saying the Lai family promised to make her the patriarch while she makes the Yi family a branch of the Lai family in return. However, Lai Huanzhou doesn't listen, and when Yi Mai tries to attack her, she throws her off with her power. Cheng Xi is shocked that even Yi Mai isn't a match for Lai Huanzhou and wonders when she became so strong. Yi Mai escapes from the window since she knows the Yi family won't let her live as the Lai family has already backed out. Walking asks Xu Tseng if he is really injured as Lai Yuan claimed, but Chu Qin doesn't open up about it. He feels Wang Qing is cruel and would seize any opportunity to get rid of him without mercy. Xiao Wu enters with Yi Mai in her hand, already dead, and she leaves. Yi Mai sees her mom and runs towards her. Meanwhile, as she runs past Chu Ting, he transfers some of his yin energy into her body, unknowingly to her. Yi Mai brings out a detonator and threatens to blow up the thousands of explosives underneath them. Chu Ting asks her what she wants and she says they should let her go. Chu Qing tells her she can go, and Wang Qing protests against it. Chu Ting asks Yi Meyer if she wants anything else, and she tells him she wants 5 billion. However, Chu Ting is just trying to buy time till the poison he transferred into her body begins to work. Suddenly, the detonator drops from her hand, and she begins to have sores all over her body till she dies. Chu Ting is so affected by the poison that he can hardly suppress it again. Wang Qing and Cheng Xi realize that this poison affected their mom, and they wonder if Chu Ting is also affected. Wang Qing dismisses all the elders and asks Cheng Xi to push her wheelchair toward Chu Ting. Wang Qing spitefully congratulates Chu Ting for finally achieving and asks him when he will marry Cheng Xi to reap the fruits of his victory. However, Meng Zui interrupts and says they are now married, and Chu Ting won't be marrying into the Yi family. Cheng Xi is shocked. She snatches the marriage certificate and checks if it is true. Meng Zhu then warns Wang Qing not to say something offensive to Chu Ting again. As Chu Qing takes his leave, he reasons that Lai Huanzhu's palm induced more poison into his body and wonders what technique she used to increase her combat power quickly. On his way out, he meets Jing Xu, however, he can't hide the poison's side effects anymore and begins coughing out blood. Meng Zhu tells Cheng Xi not to look for Chu Ting anymore, and she leaves too. Cheng Xi bursts out in tears, and Jing Xu meets her crying. She tells them that she ran into Chu Ting, and he seems seriously injured. Chu Ting manages to get outside and sees Xiao Wu. He falls into her arms and tells her to take him to Qixing Mengzhu. Meng Zui sees them and gets jealous. On getting to Qixing Mengzhu, Xiao Wu brings him out of the car, and Meng Zhu quickly takes him from her. She tells her to return later when he is fine to ask him anything she wants. Xiao Wu protests that he is her lady's fiance and she would not leave. Meng Zhu carries him inside and roughly drops him on the bed, telling him to stop pretending. She is angry that he looked for Xiao Wu when he was weak instead of her. Chu Ting grabs a pen and paper and writes a list of medicinal materials for her to get him, so he can use them to treat his wounds. Xiao Wu comes to meet him, 
and he gives her a martial art jade pendant to help repair her nerves as gratitude for her helping him. She tells him she didn't help him much this time and would help him again when he faces the Lai family. Chu King tells her that the Lai family must die within 10 days, and she asks how he plans to kill them. He says he would give the Tang family courage and the Yi family strength. Then, Xiao Wu tells him that the poison in his body is Wuxia, a vicious martial art technique used by the Empress to control dead men. She tells him that the palace chief can get rid of it, and he can go to the imperial capital to ask Gong Yu if he needs help. She adds that Wuxia is something that the Empresses of the past dynasties created to restrain the world's martial artists. Chu Ting wonders how Lai Huanzhi could practice this technique and increase her strength quickly even though the technique is hard to practice. Xiao Wu replies that it is expected as the Lai family has a piece of the Wuxia technique. Xiao Wu tells him that the technique also has disadvantages. It exhausts the potential and talents of the cultivator, completely ruining the path of martial arts and limiting their progress. Meng Zhu arrives with the medicines Chu Ting listed, and both she and Xiao Wu leave the room so he can begin his cultivation. A week later, Wang Qing and Chengxi are worried that Chu Qing has yet to show himself since he left the last time. Xiao Wei arrives with the good news that King Yino, too, the drug she has been working on, has finally been developed, and it's better than its alternatives on the market. Wang Qing tells them that it must not be leaked as they won't be able to protect it with their current strength. Chu King's mum meets Meng Zhu who asked about what happened to her son. A few days back, Chu King's mum challenged Meng Zhu, asking what she had done to her son. Meng Zhu revealed that she and Chu Ting are now married, and Chu King's parents were shocked. On hearing this, Chu King's father blamed Chu Xiao for being the reason Chu King was forced to marry Meng Zhu. Chu King's parents began to treat her as their daughter, and Meng Zhu was shocked as she was abused by her own mother when she was young and had never been treated like this. Back to the present, Meng Zhu wonders if she should tell Chu King's mum everything. A lady runs in to report that Chu King has finally come out of his room, and they are all surprised. Chu King is surprised to see his mom, and he looks at Meng Zui, wondering if she told her anything, to which Meng Zui signals no. He just gives a random reason for not coming out of his room and excuses himself to go and take his bath. After a while, Chu Ting returns from the bathroom and wonders if his mom has gone because he might have to tell her the truth if she continues to bug him. He is surprised to see Meng Zui in his room, and he asks about his mom, to which Meng Zhu replies that she left to attend to an urgent situation at her company. She asks him about his injury, but he doesn't know how to answer whether he is fine or not. He tells her that he only managed to temporarily suppress the poison in his body and could not eradicate it. They both discuss the situation of the Tang, Lai, and He families, and Chu Ting tells her that he has to help the Yi family gain its power again. Meng Zhu reacts out of jealousy, but Chu Ting tells her he would have the same for her. Meng Zhu gets pissed and leaves, and Chu Ting is surprised that she is jealous. Chu Ting prepares to head to the Yi family, but meets Zhu Buken and his guys. They tell him that they have found out what he asked them to find out, and they discover that Meng Zhu only has close relationships with three women and no man. Chu Qing is surprised and reasons that the baby in Meng Zui's womb is his. He turns around and runs to meet Meng Zui in her room. He hugs her and asks her if she has anything to tell him. Meng Zui doesn't understand what he is doing and sends him out in anger. At Yi Pharmaceuticals, Chu Ting tells them to launch King Yino. Two but walking objects, saying they can't protect it if a war begins. However, Chu Ting tells them that they should think long term. He says that Shizen Auction House will hold a large-scale medicine auction the next day, and the forces of Jinmen and neighboring cities will participate. He adds that what they need to do is to share the interests of King Yino, two in exchange for alliances with other major cities, which will make it difficult for the Tang family to grab the drug from them, as they will have to deal with the families of other cities also. Wanking asks him what if he can't do it, but he assures her it will be done. Chu Ting heads to Zhai Yu's place to tell him he wants him to organize a medicine auction. Zhai Yu tells him it's a difficult task, as he would need to follow the due protocol before it can be done, which would take three days. Chu Ting tells him he wants it done the next day, and Zhai Yu becomes shocked. They both head out of the house and discuss the auction while driving along the road. Chu Ting asks him how fast he can do it, and Zhai Yu replies that it would take two days if he fast, except he bends the rules and doesn't follow the due process. If he did that, Jai Yu tells him it would cause him grave consequences. Chu Ting, not wanting that, tells him to do it slowly then, but he says he wants to as he has always lived a boring life abiding by rules. 
Zayu takes Chu Ting to his home and meets his grandma to tell her about his plans to hold a medicine auction the following night. He asks her to help him invite the forces from Jinmen and other neighboring cities to the event. She is surprised and tells him it is too sudden. Zayu says he just made the decision and that she should tell the family that it's urgent. Chu Ting returns to meet Wang Qing and discovers she has not started making any preparations. She tells him she didn't initially believe what he said could be achieved and says she will begin making preparations immediately. Chu Ting tells her he has planned everything well and that if it fails, he will not have anything to do with the Yi family again. He goes back home and on getting to his room he meets Meng Zui there. She asks him about the auction plans and he is shocked, wondering how she knows. Meng Zi tells him she wants to kill Zhu Buken and his guys and feels she should inform him first since they are his people. She tells him they killed who they ought not to kill and wonders who instructed them to. He accepts that he is responsible, and she gets angry that he brought them to work with her so they could spy on her. However, Chu Ting draws her to himself and kisses her. However, Meng Zhu pushes him away and slaps him. He gets pissed and leaves the room to check if Zhu Bukan and his guys are still fine. He discovers they are fine. Meng Zhu didn't touch them, and he feels tricked by Meng Zhu. The medicine auction soon begins at the Shai Zen auction house. Walking is surprised not to see Chu Ting. It reaches the Yi family's turn, and they present King Yi No. Too. After proper assessment, they win the auction. Tang Rong is shocked that the Yi family defeated the Tang family, a family of medicine which has been refining medicine for hundreds of years. The Lai family, too, is shocked as they never expected to be beaten by the Yi family, even though they already knew the Tang family would. The men from the other cities commend the Yi family for producing such a great drug. Jai Yu reports to Chu Ting over a video call that the auction event was successful. Tang Rong checks the news about the auction and is angry that the Tang family lost to the Yi family. In just a few days, the Yi family has gained 80% of the market and formed alliances with many forces around. A lady rushes in to tell Tang Rong that even if they raise the price of their medical materials, they can't suppress the Yi family as King Mai invested all her resources in pharmaceuticals. They have enough inventory to keep producing King Yi No. Two for three years. On hearing this, Tang Rong begins to cough heavily and almost collapses. Meanwhile, Lai Huanzhi also receives the report that most of the Lai family members have run away. Lai Huanzhi says that the Lai family is over, and anyone who wants to run should run. The next day, Chengxi is nowhere to be found and is not answering her calls. Chu Ting receives a call from Wang Qing, who tells him they can't find Chengxi. He reasons that the Lai or Tang families must have taken her hostage. Wang Qing says it's not them, as they would have given their conditions. She tells him that Chengxi has her reasons for not picking up calls, and she is afraid she might think of doing something stupid. Chu Ting is shocked and asks her what she means. She explains that Chengxi sorted out their mother's belongings two days earlier and must have found some secrets related to her biological father. Wang Qing reveals that she and Chengxi are not siblings of the same parents. However, she is shocked when Chu King tells her he already knows, and he mentions the other details that Yi Mao is adopted, and they have another sister. Wang Qing tells him that Chengxi's other sister was taken by her father back to the Lai family when she was still a baby. She speculates that Chengxi must have discovered all these and might also think Lai Huanzhi is her other sister. She also tells him that she is afraid that Chengxi has gone to the Lai family to get revenge after finding out about the old grudges between the Lai family and the Yi family. Chu Ting tells Wang Qing he will go and find Chengxi while she also goes to the Lai family to prepare for bringing Chengxi back. Wang Qing sees this as a chance to end the Lai family for good. Chu Ting heads to the park, Chengxi took him to the previous day, and he starts asking for her whereabouts from the officials there. He is told that she came around but has left already. Chu Ting reasons that she must be headed for the Lai family, and he chases after her. He finally overtakes and blocks her way. Chengxi asks him if he came to stop her and he replies he came to accompany her to the Lai family. She tells him she made an appointment with Lai Huanzhi in a fight of life and death in front of the Lai family's house. Chu Ting reasons that she is yet to find out the truth about King Mei. They leave their cars behind and walk to the Li family house. Chu Ting tells her that she cannot beat Lai Huanzhi as she has become very powerful, even more than himself. Chengxi asks about Chu Ting's injuries and grabs his hand, telling him they should return home. She asks why, and she says she doesn't want all his efforts over her to waste by dying now. She then asks him when he will fulfill the promise to give her the whole of Jinmen, and he assures her that he will make it happen. Walking arrives with her men, ready to combat the Lai family. 
Tang Ji also comes with Xiao Wu and the Chengfeng army. Chu Ting sees Tang Ji and reasons that Tang Rong must be up to something, so he secretly calls Meng Zui to send someone to watch over the Yi family. The Li family appears, and they wonder how they should handle the situation. Someone from inside runs out, shouting back door, and is seriously wounded. Meng Zui arrives and tells Chu Ting that she has already sent someone to watch over the Yi family. Suddenly Tang Rong makes a grand entrance with a truck from the back door. She thanks Chu Ting for blocking the Lai family from escaping. Tang Rong orders her Don Tang Lion to fight Lai Yuan while she faces Lai Huanzhi. Tang Rong dashes towards Lai Huanzhi. Tang Rong hits her with her palm, but Lai Huanzhi is unaffected. Lai Huanzhi leaves Tang Rong and goes after Tang Lion instead. She smacks her with her poisonous palm from behind while he faces Lai Yuan, and he falls to the ground. She matches him and causes an explosion. Lai Yuan tries to avoid the explosion, but Tang Ji kicks her unexpectedly, sending her to the ground. Tang Ji walks up to her and torments her. However, Lai Huanzhi grabs a gun and shoots Lai Yuan dead. Everyone is shocked. Lai Huanzhi drops a weapon and attacks Chu Ting, hitting him with her poisonous palm. This sends Chu Ting flying about 30 meters away. He begins to cough blood. Lai Huanzhi runs away, and Xu Ting discovers that Lai Huanzhi's palm sucked away the poison inside his body. Wang Qing says they should chase after Lai Huanzhi, but Xu Ting tells her to let her go as the Lai family is now destroyed. Wang Qing then says she wants to confront the Tang family, but Xu Ting stops her and tells everyone to retreat, as the purpose for which they came has been accomplished. Chengxi gives a short speech and dismisses everyone. Suddenly, Wang Qing feels sick and starts to cough blood. Chu Ting scans her body, and Chengxi carries her away. They all leave, leaving only Chu Ting and Meng Zhu behind. Meng Zhu discovers his spiritual power has been restored and asks why Lai Huanzhi saved him. He tries to explain, but she tells him not to bother. She then asks how Tang Rong took advantage of the fight to destroy the Lai family. It happens that Chu Ting already agreed with her, which favors both of them. Meanwhile, at the Xing family's house, Sing Lai is angry that Tang Rong missed a good opportunity to defeat the Yi family for the little profit she will get. She later reasons that Tang Rong is playing smart to take the chance to win the Yi family's allies to her side, after which she will kill the Yi family. At Kuxing Mengju, Meng Zui asks Xu Ting what his plans are after settling the Yi family's matter, and he answers that he will go catch the dragon so he can protect his son. Xu Ting then tells her he will be moving to Vermilion Bird Street and wants her to move in with him. Meng Zhu blushes. The next day, Chu King and his family head to the mansion on Vermilion Bird Street. Chu King meets Sing Lai at the Xing family's residence to tell her he has moved to Vermilion Bird Street. The challenge she gave his sister if she must marry her son, and asks when she will marry her son to his sister. She replies that she already knew he would come and says that his sister and her son should get engaged first, and the marriage will be during the Chinese New Year. Chu Ting asks her why she wants that and she replies that she wants him to marry her daughter too. Chu Ting becomes shocked and refuses, making an excuse that he is not worthy of marrying into such a famous family. Afterward, he heads to the Zhai family's residence and meets the Zhai family giving Zhai Yu punishment for using the family's name privately for the medicine auction. Zhai Yu is glad to see Chu Ting and takes him to a private place to discuss with him. He expresses his anticipation to see the green dragon Chu Ting promised to show him and Chu Ting tells him that he needs some purple bamboo that is at least a hundred years old from the purple bamboo forest. Jai Yu contacts someone to find it immediately, and Chu Ting returns home. He contacts Chengxi and Xiao Wu to tell them he will catch the green dragon in two days. Meng Zui sees him and collects his phone to see who he is chatting with. She says she also wants to come along, but Chu Ting objects since she is pregnant. Meng Zui asks why he asked her to help him fight when he was in danger but is now concerned that she is pregnant. She insists that she will go, and he reluctantly accepts. Meng Zui then suddenly grabs and kisses him, and you know of course, he continues kissing her too. Chu Xiao badges in to disturb them, but her father cautions her and tells them to continue. After a while, Chu Ting receives a call from Zhai Yu who tells him he got a purple bamboo forest filled with many old purple bamboos and asks if he needs a few or wants to buy the whole forest. Chu Ting tells him to buy the entire forest as it must be a treasure since it has many old purple bamboos. After he hangs the call, Meng Zi tells him she has a bad feeling and asks if he offended someone and they want revenge. Suddenly, Elder Xing Wei arrives to tell him that Xing Lai wants him to come over immediately. 
Chu Ting is surprised and tells her that Sing Lai could have just called him over the phone, and Sing Wei threatens that he won't be able to return if he doesn't come with her immediately. Chu King heads to the Xing family's residence, and Sing Lai welcomes him with a hard punch. He wonders how he offended her again, and she tells him he hid the truth about the Green Dragon. Chu Ting replies that she also made his sister wait outside the whole night before deciding to help when he needed help. Chu Ting tells her they are now leaving. Sing Lai tells him that the news from the Yunjing River was leaked, and a group of second-generation ancestors came to investigate from the royal capital, asking her what she knows about the Green Dragon. She further tells him that she can handle them as they are just a group of juniors, but the issue is with their family elders, which they got letters from. She also tells him that they are still in her house, and they demand she hands him over to them. Chu Ting is shocked. He cannot let another steal the green dragon from him, as his child could be in danger. Chu Ting tells her to help him delay them, and asks her what she wants in return. She tells him that she wants the green dragon's tail, to which he replies he can only give her that if he succeeds in catching the green dragon, considering that a third party is now involved. He heads back home and wonders who leaked the message, thinking if it is Zha Yu or Chengxi. He receives a call from Xiao Wu, who asks him what they should do about it, as the Imperial City would soon come to find it too. Chu King tells her that people from the Imperial City are already in Jinmen, and asks if she doesn't already know this. Xiao Wu perceives that Chu Ting suspects her of leaking the information about the Green Dragon, and she tells him she is not the one. Chu Ting then tells her to pack her things, head to Cloud Mountain, and wait for him at the Purple Summit. He says that Jia Yu would be there too, and she should tell him he sent her. After the call, Xiao Wu reasons that she has to help Chu Ting catch the Green Dragon, otherwise he will kill her. Chu King leaves his room and sees a stranger greeting his family. His mom introduces her as Chu Lan, his cousin. Chu Ting remembers that Gong Yu said her engagement was supposed to be with him. Chu Ting greets him shabbily and excuses himself to return to his room. But Chu Lan walks up to him and tells him he wants to discuss something with him in his room. On getting to the room, Chu Lan reveals that he came because of the Green Dragon. He asks Chu Ting to reveal everything he knows about the Green Dragon offering to reward him with millions, but Chu Ting feigns ignorance, and Chu Lan threatens to deal with him if he refuses to tell him. However, Chu Ting tells him to go out when he is done. Chu Lan gets angry and launches an attack. Being more powerful, Chu King punches him before he can do anything, sending him flying. Chu Lan attacks again with the golden palm strike, but Chu King dissolves the attack easily. Chu Ting grabs him by the neck, and Chu Lan asks if his mother taught him the techniques, Chu Lan tells Chu Tseng that his mother vowed to the Chu family never to teach anyone martial arts when her cultivation was crippled, but she has broken her vow. Chu King uses the opportunity to ask what made the Chu family treat his mother like that. Chu Lan tells Chu King that his father was drugged and thrown onto the sixth elder's bed, then his mother was lured to the room, and after she saw her husband, she got enraged and killed the sixth elder. Chu Ting begins to choke him, attempting to kill him but he reasons that the Chu family might come for his family if he kills Chu Lan. He leaves him alone and sends him out of his room. Chu Ting and Meng Zhu leave home the next day to embark on the mission to catch the Green Dragon. On their way, Chu Ting tells Meng Zhu about the leakage of information about the Green Dragon. She becomes worried for her child, but Chu Ting assures her that he will do his best to catch the Green Dragon and bring the necessary materials needed for the child's survival. They head to Chengxi's place to carry her, and Chu Ting suspects Wang King leaked the information. On getting to the Yi family's mansion, Chu Ting confronts Wang King for leaking the information about the Green Dragon, and she confesses looking sober. Chu Ting grabs her neck and attempts to choke her, but Chengxi pleads for her sister. He leaves her but threatens to bury her with the Green Dragon if anything happens to it. He leaves with Meng Zui and Chengxi. Wang King begins to cry. Her phone's wallpaper gets revealed, showing Chu King's picture. Does she like him? After getting to Cloud Mountain, they meet Xiao Wu and Zhai Yu, already waiting. Xiao Wu is a bit scared of what Chu Ting might do to her, but she tries to get comfortable around him since she didn't do anything wrong. She tells him about her friend, who also came from the Imperial Capital, to inquire about the Green Dragon. She however says that she didn't reveal anything to her and suggests that could bring her on board since the information about the Green Dragon has leaked anyway, and ask her to pay too. Chu Ting tells Zhai Yu to handle the business matters while he goes into the forest to get something. After a while, he returns with a purple bamboo stick and sees a new lady standing with them. 
Jiayu tells him that the lady is willing to pay a whopping 500 million at a go. Looking at the lady, Chu King perceives that she is extraordinary and is not like the other idiots from the imperial capital. She introduces herself as Shu and compliments his handsomeness. Chu King gets cocky and tells her he was expecting her to ask him how much it costs to have him for the night. Shu laughs and asks anyway. Meng Zui and Cheng Xi get angry. Chu King gives Zayu the bamboo stick while he gets more as they need to make a bamboo raft before they set off. Jiayu tells Chu Cheng that if he knew this was what Chu King needed, he could have gotten some people to make thousands of it in a day without spending much work and time. Chu insults him that he is blind and asks if his golden eye, as the manager of the auction house, is only for decoration. Jiayu is embarrassed, and he decides to make use of his golden eye. He discovers the bamboo stick is so powerful that it affects his eye. Then, they all enter the forest to look for more bamboo, leaving Chu King and Shu behind. Shu tries to touch the bamboo rod in Chu King's hand, but he takes it away, saying it is not for her to touch. She then gets naughty and refers to his long rod. Chu Ting asks why she didn't come with her colleagues in the second generation group from the imperial capital. She tells him she is more interested in him than in the green dragon and reveals that she knows a lot about him and his family. Chu Ting discovers that she is from the Gong family and he gets angry and tries to attack her with the purple bamboo rod, but she dodges it. She tells him that he was supposed to marry her, and Chu Lan should have married Gong Yu, but it was changed. Chu King asks her if Gong Yu's losing her abilities has something to do with her. She gets angry and attacks him. Chu King blocks it, but realizes she has a solid cultivation base and martial arts talent. Chu Ting launches his own attack, but she just blocks it with one arm. She is way more powerful than Chu Ting. Chu Ting reasons that Gong Xu is Gong Yu's enemy, but has a close relationship with Xiao Wu, Gong Yu's confidant. Gong Xu tells him not to think about the matter between her and Gong Yu as it is very complicated. She tells him that more than 30 people came from the imperial capital, among which three are so powerful that even she cannot handle them. She advises that if he wastes his energy like this, he might not even get the green dragon stung, not to talk of the other significant parts. Jai Yu and the others return with the bamboo shaft they made and head to Yunjiang. They head upstream on the raft and paddle overnight, without finding the green dragon. Jai Yu, already tired, asks Chu Ting how long they have to paddle, and Chu Ting tells him he doesn't know. Meanwhile, the second generation group is also in the same vicinity, searching for the green dragon but on land. They are already exhausted too. After a while, Chu King discovers the bamboo has changed color and infers that the green dragon is downstream meaning they must turn around and head back. Chu Ting explains that the purple bamboo was born from the collection of Qi Yifeng Qi, and its transportation can be used to explore the Yunjing fortune, which makes it the best way to find the green dragon. She, one of the three powerful people in the second generation group, also discovers, using her compass, that they have to head back. The second generation team gets angry, but they also turn around anyway. Main Zubi asks Chu Ting if the second generation group will find the green dragon before them, and he tells her they won't. Chengxi gets sad and jealous seeing Meng Zui and Chu Ting together. Gong Xu notices this and asks her if she likes Chu Ting too. Chengxi acts hostile, and Gong Xu tells her that she and Meng Zui don't have a chance to be with him since he already has a marriage contract with the Gong family. However, Chengxi shocks her when she says that Chu Ting and Meng Zui are already married. Gong Xu gets angry and attempts to attack Meng Zui, but Chu King protects her and almost falls into the river. However, he uses the bamboo stick to gain balance and returns to the raft. Chu Ting asks what the problem is, and she replies that Meng Zui dared to force him to marry her when he already belonged to the Gong family. Chu King tells her that he offered to marry her and wasn't forced to. Meng Zui is surprised that Chu King is defending her, knowing that she actually forced him to marry her. Chu Ting tells Gong Xu that he and Gong Yu disagreed with the marriage contract, but she doesn't listen and still keeps yelling at him. He then tells them to talk about it later, or she should leave the ship if she plans to continue causing trouble. She then asks him what he thinks of the marriage contract, and he replies that he has already dumped it in the trash can. She yells at him that he should get ready to receive the wrath of the Gong and Shu families. Meng Zhu whispers and asks if he still has the marriage contract, but he tells her that he has really dumped it in the trash can. Chengxi wears a sullen face. She really likes Chu Ting. Suddenly, Chu Ting feels something in the river with the bamboo stick, which also changes color. Jai Yu uses his golden eye to check what is in the water and sees an enormous energy flow. 
Chu Ting asks who can swim, and Jai Yu says he can. Chu Ting tells him to enter the water and fish what is in the water. Jai Yu gets scared and reluctant, but Gong Xu kicks him into the water. After some time, Jai Yu returns with some snails, saying they are the only things he saw beneath the water. Chu Ting is surprised, seeing it's a unique type of snail. He tells him to go and get more. After Jai Yu returns, they wonder what they will do with the snails, and Chu Ting tells them to fry and eat. They are shocked, but Jai Yu volunteers to prepare the meal. When he is done, they all eat. However, Chu Ting tells them he and Meng Zui would be excluded. Meng Zui goes speechless, wondering why he doesn't want her to eat such a delicious meal prepared by Jai Yu. A while after they have finished eating, Chengxi wishes she could have an extra plate, and suddenly, they all start to feel strange. The feeling gets so intense that Chengxi screams out in pain. She then discovers that she has broken through the 8th martial arts rank. Gong Xu and Xiao Wu see this and start cultivating too. Meanwhile, Jia Yu is bleeding from his nose, and when Meng Zui asks Xu Xing about it, he tells her that the nosebleed will stop as the green dragon's chi nourishes the snails they ate, they are capable of increasing one's power if eaten. He tells her it will react negatively with the innate green dragon chi in her belly, so he didn't let her eat them. She asks why he didn't eat too, and he replies that he doesn't need it. Jai Yu's golden eyes suddenly break through. He becomes excited and offers to hold the purple bamboo stick so he can know when they hit a new treasure in the river. However, Chu Ting refuses to give it to him, knowing he can't handle it. Only Gong Xu and Meng Zui can handle it, but Meng Zui is not in the best state, and he doesn't trust Gong Su so he has to continue holding it. Although, he is surprised the green dragon has yet to reveal itself even after they have taken some of Yunjiang's luck. She discovers a change in her compass and realizes that some people have stolen some of Yunjiang's luck. She expects them to die miserably. The bamboo changes in color again, and while Zhai Yu prepares to enter the river again, Gong Xu draws him back and jumps into the river instead. After a while, she brings out a turtle. Zhai Yu cooks, and they all eat again. They continue the cultivation and increase in realms. Chu Ting watches Gong Xu and reasons this could also be a good chance for Gong Yu. At night, Meng Su discovers that Chu King's hands are already bruised from holding the bamboo stick for a very long. Meng Su says catching the green dragon is more challenging than she thought and asks him exactly what the others are eating. Chu King tells her not to worry about it. Actually, while Chengxi and the others were increasing their cultivation base by absorbing Yunjiang's luck, he was backlashed by Yunjiang's airluck instead. Meng Zhu suggests they return home, but Chu Ting tells her they must continue what they have already started. She starts cultivating to relieve him of the pain, but he stops her. She starts bleeding too. Chu Ting tells her he won't do things he is unsure about and won't let her hurt their child. He tells her that he is tired and she should not distract him. Meng Zhu kisses him and appreciates him for helping her so much. Chu Ting feels good in reasons that this feeling was missing in his previous life. Gong Xu announces to Chu Ting that she has broken into the transformation realm, making her the youngest warrior martial artist in her family. She thanks Chu Ting and says she will help him solve the issue around the marriage contract for free and also volunteers to help him hold the purple bamboo stick. She carries the stick and realizes that Chu Ting has been carrying such a heavy stick for three days without sleeping. Chu Ting carries Meng Zhu and goes to sleep. The next morning, Gong Xu is already drained of all her energy as the purple bamboo has sucked it. Suddenly, something hits the purple bamboo beneath the water, and Gong Xu wonders what it is. On hearing this, Chu Ting wakes up immediately. Turbulence begins in the river, and the raft almost capsizes. Gong Xu starts to use her martial arts to fight the turbulence. Chu Ting touches the raft with one hand and uses the other to maneuver the raft through the storm with his powers. The storm becomes stronger, and Zhai Yu almost falls off the raft, but he holds on to Gong Xu. Gong Xu saves Zhai Yu by pushing him back into the raft while she falls in the river. Chu Ting quickly grabs the bamboo rod to prevent it from falling into the river. He then asks who will go and fetch Gong Xu out of the river. Zhai Yu immediately jumps into the river and saves Gong Xu. Gong Xu reasons that she still has a long way to go in the martial arts journey and should not become complacent because of her recent achievement. They see the little golden fish that caused the turbulence and wonder how powerful it is. Chu Ting tells them it is just a step away from becoming a green dragon. He is still surprised that the green dragon has yet to appear, even after they captured a carp of this level. He suspects that something has happened to the green dragon. 
They continue their journey on the river. Chu Ting tells them that when they reach the border of the river, they should all get off the boat. Meng Zui and Chen Qi ask why, and he answers that they are about to dig out the foundation of the Yunjing River since the Green Dragon, who should have appeared, has failed too, which means something has happened to it. Hearing this, Meng Zui and Chen Qi protest and say they will accompany him. Meanwhile, she reasons that she could not even dare to go on the water and chose to go on land, but Chu Ting used the water route and has repeatedly stolen Yunjang's luck, and yet he is still alive. She suddenly discovers someone in the transformation realm with Chu Ting on his wrath and wonders who it could be. She reasons it can't be Xing Lai, the only martial artist currently in the transformation realm. She becomes shocked when she realizes it is Gong Xu, and the others are amazed that she has attained the transformation realm at such an age. She immediately orders them to cut the trees and build a boat quickly so they can catch up with them. After a while, in a particular location on the river, Chu Ting grabs the purple bamboo stick and heads for the river. He stirs the water body with it, forming large standing waves. The second generation group, now in the water, sees this and they wonder if Chu Ting is causing this. She affirms it is him. Chu King uses martial arts techniques and the black dragon jumps out of the river. On seeing this, two ladies from the second generation group jump after it, and when Gong Xu sees them, she launches into the air after them, claiming they saw the dragon first before them. Chu Ting discovers the black dragon has fainted, so he makes some martial arts move and touches it, causing it to be revived. The black dragon roars very loudly and heads back into the river. Chu Ting returns to his raft, and Gong Xu asks why he let the dragon escape. He replies that the green dragon is already gone, and they cannot capture this one too since they've already stolen most of Yunjang's luck. If they also capture the Black Dragon, there'd be many grave consequences that they won't be able to bear. One of the three powerful ladies in the second generation group, the Kai, demands that Chu Ting bow to her. Although the worship of the Empress has been long abolished, the lady is doing this to insult Chu Ting deliberately. Chu Ting replies that it depends on if they can bear it, and he goes on his knees. She immediately discovers that he is using his luck to worship the Kai. She realizes that his luck is powerful enough to compete with the luck of Yunjang, and Akai cannot bear it. So she quickly jumps in to protect Akai and gets hit by Chu King's luck, causing severe injuries. Chu Fi, the third of the powerful ladies in the second generation group, sees this and launches an attack on Chu Ting. But Gong Xu protects Chu Ting and hits her. Chu Ting tells them he will not kill them, and they should return as though nothing happened at the Yunjing River. Chu Lan is shocked and can't believe that this is Chu Ting for him to have opposed and trampled the three powerful ladies. After the second generation group leaves, Chu Ting faints from exposing himself to Yun Zhang's powerful spiritual energy. They all deliberate over returning while Chu Ting sleeps, but Meng Zui says she won't return. Chu Ting suddenly wakes up and asks if they will accompany him, as he wants to go into the mountain to find the dragon's nest. They are shocked that there is even something like that and he tells them the dragon's nest is usually not in the river, but in the mountain nearby. They plan to head out into the mountains the following day. After a while of others sleeping, Gong Xu asks Chu Tsing to go on a walk with her. She asks him why he desperately wants to catch the green dragon, and Chu Ting explains the situation around Meng Zui to her. She is surprised he is looking for the dragon because of Meng Zui. She is amazed and becomes more attracted to him. Returning to where the others are, Chu Ting ties the black dragon's beard to the bamboo stick. It would help them in detecting the location of the dragon's nest. They follow the direction of the dragon beard, and after walking for a while, Chu King perceives that there is an incoming arrow directed towards them, and he immediately grabs it while it's still in the air. Chu Ting observes the arrow and discovers it was made for humans and not beasts, as it was designed to injure martial artists in the third and fourth ranks of the martial realm. They realize that there are also two other groups in the forest aside from them. They soon see a corpse lying in the forest, and shockingly, Meng Xu recognizes the group the dead person is from. Gong Xu also recognizes the group, and Chu Ting wonders if she knows anything. He asks her, and she tells him she does, but the information could be more helpful at the moment, and she is also unwilling to tell him. Chu Ting considers Gong Xu's countenance and infers that the power behind the lady that was killed is not simple. A different group finds the dead body also and burn it. Chu Ting and his team enter into more traps as more arrows are shot at them. Chu Ting says they are about to reach the core area where the two groups are fighting. Suddenly, a twig elongates and grabs Jiayu's legs. It tries to pull him away, but Gong Xu rescues him. More twigs come at them, 
but Chu King uses a martial arts technique to create a barricade around them that protects them. Chu Ting says this is a spell of the wood attribute, and the caster is a monk. Knowing that the wood monks like to hide in the canopy and mimic trees, he spots the monk and launches toward her. He then grabs her and throws her down. She asks if he has anything to do with King Zuan's legacy, and Chu Ting replies that they are just passing by and don't know what that is. She tells him and his team to leave the forest, and, since they are not related, and if they don't want to be killed. Chu King tells her that her life is in his hands, and she gets angry. Chu King tortures and interrogates her. She threatens that the Xuan New Palace won't let him go. She intentionally combusts herself and dies. Chu Ting and his team continue following the directions of the Black Dragon's beard, and Chu Ting tells them they are close to the dragon nest. Suddenly, Chengxi sees an illusion of her mom running past her into the forest, and she immediately runs after her. Chengxi soon falls into a pitfall, but Chu Ting quickly grabs her hand and draws her out. She attempts to continue chasing her supposed mother, but Chu King stops her and says he will find her. He jumps on a tree and sees a palm imprint on it. He discovers that Chengxi really saw someone, and the person is at least two levels higher than him, which made him unable to detect the person with his spiritual sense. He wonders what such a master is doing in the forest and why Chengxi recognized her as her mother. Suddenly, the lady appears in a bear mask behind him and jumps off. He reasons she could have arranged the traps and is probably from the Xuan New Palace. He chases after her, but the lady keeps going in circles. He reasons that the lady is not that strong and can't be the lady Chengxi saw. He eventually catches her and removes the mask from her face. He is shocked to discover that it is Lai Huanger. She jumps into the waterfall before them, and he wonders why she is in the forest too. Coincidentally and quite luckily, he discovers the dragon nest he has been searching for is under the waterfall. He decides to return to Meng Zui and others first, so they won't be worried about him. As he heads back, he meets Gong Shu and asks what she is doing. She actually came to look for him, since he had been away for a while. Chu Ting hastens up to meet the others. He tells Gong Shu not to have left the others behind as she is the one who could protect them while he was away. They search for a while but can't find them, so Chu King suggests that they set up a fire to attract them. Suddenly, he senses someone in the bush nearby and tells Gong Shu to chase her. After catching her, he uses the soul-searching technique and discovers that the lady is from the Xuan New Palace. Afterward, the lady self-combusts, as the monk did earlier. Chu Ting wonders what the Xuan New Palace is where women can practice martial arts and Taoism. Meanwhile, Meng Zui meets one of the women from the Xuan Palace, and the lady bows to her. Meng Zui asks what they are doing in the forest and she replies that they came on the order of Guardian Su to investigate the King Xuan sect. Meng Zui kills her and decides to find Xu King and the others. In another location within the forest, Chengxi fights with another lady from the Xuan Palace, and she realizes that the lady is way stronger than her. However, a strange lady rescues her, and Chengxi discovers it's her mom. She tries to speak with her, but she leaves instantly and returns to the top of a tree to meet Lai Huanger. While Chu Ting and Gong Shu search for the others, they suddenly hear the sound of Xiao Wu's shotgun. Xiao Wu, now severely injured, is with Zhai Yu, and they are faced with three ladies from the Xuan Du Palace. Chu Ting and Gong Shu come to their rescue. Chu Ting reasons that Meng Zui should be able to defend herself against those women as they are not that strong, but Chengxi might be in trouble, so he tells Zhai Yu and Xiao Wu to stay back and hide while they go to look for Meng Zui and Chengxi. Other way, Gong Shu reveals that her father is the Empress younger brother, and Xu Ting is intrigued. They separate to search for Chengxi and Meng Zui individually. After a while, Xu Ting sees Meng Zui, and she runs to hug him. Xu Ting tells her that he has found the dragon nest and assures her that everything will be fine. She asks him if he can lend her his mask. Xu Ting brings it out, drops a drop of her blood on it to make it recognize her, and gives it to her. She brings Xu King's sword and wields it. She realizes that the sword has a strong murderous aura. He tells her the mask can also take any form she wants, and she tries it by changing it to another type. She puts the mask on and returns to meet others together with Chu Ting. Gong Xu also returns with Chengxi. Chengxi tells Chu Ting that she saw her mother, and that her mother saved her. The others disbelieve this, but Chu Ting tells her if he believes it, as the person he chased earlier was Lai Huanger. They are shocked and wonder how she got there. But Chu Ting tells them not to worry about that and focus on getting the dragon nest. They head towards the waterfall, and on getting to a particular place, Chu King becomes uncomfortable with the atmosphere. 
Suddenly, rain begins to fall, and they wonder how it is raining at such a time. Chu Ting reasons that this is the rain technique and infers that the person who cast the spell is in at least the Mahayan realm, equivalent to the martial saint realm. A slap from such a person would be death. He wonders what the monk is planning to do. Meng Zhu says hiding their traces in the rain would be difficult, and the people from the Exuan Palace will soon find them. Meanwhile, Lai Huanger and King Mai are watching them. Lai Huanger asks her if she is still King Mai, and she replies yes and no, as her strength is greatly damaged. She says she cannot go into a fight with the Exuan Palace, and would need the help of someone which she has already spotted in Chu King's group to get rid of them. Chu Ting detects that some people have been following them. He challenges them to reveal themselves if they have anything to say. Su Hufa and the other Xuan Palace members reveal themselves. Su Hufa demands that someone should come and talk with her. Jia Yu decides to go, but Chu King stops him and tells Gong Xu to go instead, but she refuses. He then asks Meng Zhu to, and she refuses too. He wonders why Meng Zhu doesn't want to talk with her. However, Cheng Xi offers to speak with Su Hufa. Chu Ting tells her not to be afraid and that he will use voice transmission to talk with her secretly so she can know what to say to her. Su Hufa asks Cheng Xi what they are doing in the forest since they are not part of the remnants of King Xuan that they desire to eliminate. She replies that they came for the green dragon and got lost in the mountains. On hearing this, Su Hufa is shocked and asks if they really know about the green dragon. Cheng Xi tells her that they have a way to find it. Su Hufa then offers to reward them greatly if they can find the Green Dragon. However, she tells Cheng Xi to kill the two men among them before they embark on the mission. Cheng Xi gets angry, but Chu King uses the voice transmission technique to tell her that she should say they will be used as bait to lure out the Green Dragon. They all head to the waterfall, and Chu King makes the X1 Palace believe through Cheng Xi that there is danger down the waterfall, so they should be allowed to go first to prepare the way. Chu Ting and others jump down the waterfall and come out in front of a tunnel. Chu Ting tells them the tunnel leads to the dragon nest, and they all head inside it. The Xuan New Palace group soon realizes they were tricked and head down the waterfall too. Chu Ting and the others finally arrive at the dragon nest. They discover that the dragon is already dead, and its flesh has decayed. Chu Ting reasons that this is strange as the body of a dragon usually doesn't rot for hundreds of years after death. He suddenly discovers that there is Wusha, the poison that affected him in King Mai in the remnants of the dragon's bones. He infers that this makes sense as the dragon swallowed King Mei, which could have caused the dragon to die. Chengxi concludes that her mother is still alive but wonders why she isn't coming back to look for them, and Chu Ting tells her that it can only be because she exchanged life with the dragon in the process of the dragon absorbing the wuxia from her body. Meng Su becomes dejected and touches her stomach, but Chu Ting reassures her that he will find a solution. He then tells everyone to step back as he begins to use his martial arts powers on the remnant of the dragon. He absorbs the dragon's soul remnant and inserts it in Meng Zui's stomach. The Xuan New Palace group arrives, and Su Hufa threatens to kill them for tricking her. Chu King asks how she is sure she won't be the one to die. She gets angry and prepares to attack, but Chu Ting generates some powers and strikes the dragon with them, suddenly reviving it. Su Hufa becomes scared, and the dragon uses its tail to hit her away. She yells at them that they deserve death, but her subordinates tell her that she can't be him as the golden light that shines around him is Yunjiang's luck. The X1 palace group turns back and leaves the tunnel. Chu Ting caresses the dragon and tells it to go. It obeys and runs out of the tunnel, causing the tunnel walls to crumble. Chu Ting becomes exhausted due to Yunjiang's luck he used and Meng Zhu supports him. They head towards the exit. Su Hufa returns to the shore, and she becomes determined to kill Chu Ting. Suddenly, Lai Wanger appears before her. King Mai also arrives and begins to suck life out of her with her power. She tells Su Hufa that she is King Xuan. Su Hufa is shocked and tells her that King Xuan is dead, and besides, he is a man. Lai Wanger becomes confused and asks if she is King Mai or King Xuan. King Mai laughs and explains that she has two vivid memories in her soul, one of King Mai and the other of King Xuan. She further says that sometimes she is King Mai, and other times King Xuan. She tells her she wants to leave the forest and asks if she wants to go with her. Lai Huanker tells her she would love to go with her, as she has no place to return to. King Mai then tells her she might accept her as her disciple. Chu Ting and others return from the tunnel and hop in a chopper to take them back to the city. In the air, Cheng Xi sees her mom in the forest and cries. Chu Ting and Meng Zhu return home, 
and he notices that Gong Shu is following them. He asks her to go with Xiao Wu, but she says she wants to know where he lives. They soon meet Shi Dekai and Jifei waiting at their home. She thanks Chu Ting for not killing her the last time. He says whatever and starts to go inside. Dekai asks him if he plans to stay in Jinmen for his entire life. He replies that he will be admitted to the National University and will go to the Imperial Capital. Dekai laughs and tells him she will be waiting then. He heads inside with Meng Zui and Gong Shu and meets his sister, romancing her boyfriend in the living room. She sees Gong Shu and asks why he is hooking up with another woman again. Gong Shu makes a funny comment and Meng Zui heads inside. Chu Xiao continues to rant about him seeing another woman besides Meng Zui. Chu Xiao then tells him that one of his classmates came to look for him two days back. He thinks it is Song Choran, but she tells him it is Tang Zion. Chu Ting wonders why Tang Zion came to see him since he has been against the Tang family while supporting the Yi family. Chu Xiao shows him the admission ticket Tang Zion brought for him, saying that the college admission exam is the next day. Chu Ting is shocked. He collects the ticket and quickly runs to his room to start studying. He begins studying and reasons that the only way he can engrave all the book's contents into his mind is with God's knowledge. Main Su later comes into his room and assists him with his study. She remembers her encounter with the Xuan Palace group in the forest. What is Meng Zui's relationship with the Xuan Palace group? Is she hiding something from Chu Ting and trying to fool him? Let us know if you want the next part in the comments section by commenting reverse. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you guys in the next video.